It's opening night in Southwest Houston. The tailgaters are ready. The food's ready. The only question is, are the players ready? Tonight, from the brand new Dunham Field at Husky Stadium, the Houston Baptist Huskies play their first official game in their new on-campus stadium as they welcome in the McMurray Warhawks in the 2014 season opener. And it's coming up next. Hi everybody and welcome to Dunham Field at Husky Stadium here on the campus of Houston Baptist University for the 2014 season opener between the Houston Baptist Huskies and the McMurray Warhawks. I'm Tom Franklin alongside is Jeff Power and Jeff it's always great to start a season but it's especially great to start the first season like Houston Baptist is doing. Absolutely first game on campus this year full schedule in the Southland Conference folks here at Houston Baptist University have been waiting for this well the entire existence of the school. <laughs> Absolutely last year they played a seven game developmental schedule is what they called it went three and four along the way tried to feel some things out they spent most of the year using Kadarius Baker is the yep. quarterback, but this year and tonight, it'll be Jonathan Flanagan who gets to start. Yeah, Jonathan Fleming, one thing about him, about two months ago was shot in the shoulder and also in the heel. The fact that he's on the football field is amazing all to itself, but this is a player who got the start last year in the opener against Sam Houston State, did not play that well in that game, was replaced by Kadarius Baker for the remainder of the season. Fleming definitely wants to have a big game out here today. Now McMurray is a team in transition. They were trying to be a D2 school and now have decided to drop back into Division Three status. Lance Hinson, the first year head coach, he's got his hands full. Yeah, he does. In fact, this is his first year and after nine seasons at the University of St. Mary up in Kansas. And, you know, he's got himself a team, though, that is loaded with talent. Uh, Chris Simpson, a running back, almost 1,000 yards rushing last year. And remember this man, Jarrett Smith. Yeah, he is going to be a key receiver. He's only five yards short of a career record here at McMurray, so that could be key. Well, as we mentioned, it's opening night. It's always fun. You can feel the electricity in the air right here down on the field, Dunham Field, here at Husky Stadium. They're anxious to get started. Hey, the fans are ready. You saw the tailgating going on earlier. In fact, we talked to some of the players and coaches just about how excited they are about the opener right here at HBU. This first game for the new season in this new stadium, it's going to be, it's going to be one amped up night for us. We're going to be ready, ready to roll and just go pound to McMurray. Every week you play, you're making history. And that's just history with the fans, history with the school, history with the other other opponents. And so we're really excited for the opportunity and be able to play in front of our home fans. They can walk from their dorms to come to the stadium. That would be a great experience. I think as a coach, it's impossible to convey how gratifying it is that when you have an administration that shares a love and a passion for the game that you coach. And, and where that really manifests itself is a commitment that Dr. Sloan and Steve Maniaccio would make uh, and, and, and the work ethic it takes to go out and build that donor group of individuals uh, to fund a multi-million dollar stadium, uh, it leaves you very humble as a coach, very appreciative. I can't wait to that first ball game. I think it's be something to, that will separate us from many startup football programs that in two years you could play on campus. The HBU Huskies and the McMurray Warhawks are getting set for the opening kickoff and we'll have it for you next right here on Fox Sports. And we're back here at Dunham Field at Husky Stadium getting set for the opening kickoff. Houston Baptist won the coin toss, elected to defer. McMurray will take the opening kick, defending the north end zone to our, or the north end zone to our left. Houston Baptist dressed in the home blue jerseys with white numerals, white pants, and white helmets. The Warhawks of, McM of McMurray are all dressed in white, trimmed in maroon. Anthony Shin ready to kick off for HBU and puts the right foot into it and drives it down. Deep fumbled at the three yard line and it'll be taken there by Jared Smith and he's not going to go very far. When you don't field a kickoff cleanly, 
That's going to cause a breakdown and let the coverage teams get down there. And HBU did a great job of pinning the McMurray Warhawks deep inside their own territory at the 15-yard line, where it'll be first and 10. And they will be led out by junior quarterback Matthew McHugh. He's a 6'1 junior out of Ingleside High School in Ingleside, Texas. Called a very quick study, very athletic, and a good thrower by his head coach, Lance Hinson, who is in his first year. Yeah, a chance to show what he can do here. Of course, Ingleside down around Corpus Christi. I'm sure he's got plenty of uh, fan support here with his family and all. And we're underway here at Houston Baptist University. Shotgun formation, three receivers to the near side. McHugh's going to throw, screen out of the backfield. Up the far sideline and a short gain across the 15 out to about the 18-yard line. Yeah, it's Paxton Grayer right there out of Abilene, Texas. Of course, McMurray located in Abilene. They've got a lot of former Abilene Eagles on this team. Steve Warren, the head coach over there at Abilene High, can really coach up these players. and Got a good-looking squad here for McMurray this year. Now, Mc, now let's take a quick look at the offensive line for McMurray. You can see them from right to left. And now two backs in the backfield, one to each shoulder. McHugh on second down and seven for the 18-yard line. Moving at the line of scrimmage. And a running play for Grayer. He didn't get very far. And fortunately for HBU, the defensive lineman was able to get back without making contact or drawing off and set up a short gain of a yard. And that'll be third down and six now for the 19-yard line. Here are the skill position players for McMurray. Wide receiver Paxton Grayer and Jared Smith, who we talked about at the top of the show, their two outstanding performers. And some younger talent to fill in. And Jarrett will be flanked out to the left. Three receivers come to the near side for McHugh. Third down and six. Grayer will be at his left shoulder. Huskies show blitz. Here they come. McHugh flushed out of the pocket to his right. Throws on the run. And it is intercepted at the 39-yard line and brought back to the 30-yard line. Mike Cole it's there Mike with the ball. Yeah. yeah, the strong safety stepping up big out of Shawnee, Oklahoma. And there's a first. Everything's a first in this particular stadium. But how about picking off the first pass here? Nice job. McHugh was, I almost thought he got past the line of scrimmage. I wanted to double check that, but he was coming right down the line. Let's take a look. No, he's clearly behind. It was the 19-yard line. He threw it for the 18. But nice job just keeping the eye on the ball, literally. I mean, that ball was glued to his eyes there for the, the last part of that catch. Now Jonathan Fleming, the redshirt sophomore, will lead out the HBU offense. They will also run spread. Two receivers to the far side. One back, that's Kelly. He's got the handoff. Dances through a little bit of a hole on his left. Still on his feet. Forced out to his right. He's still going. The whistle never blew. He's to the 20-yard line and tackled at the 18-yard line. What a run by B.J. Kelly, the redshirt freshman out of Midway High School in Waco. Well, the fans here with HBU know that type of style of running from B.J. Kelly. He's very elusive. Watch as he avoids the first tackle right here up the middle and has the awareness to break outside, somehow getting free. Nicely done. Quick snap on second, first and 10 from the 19-yard line. It goes for five. Kelly inside the 15. And Kelly again, the ball carrier. Just took it straight up the middle. And there's a good look at Jonathan Fleming there directing traffic. Great to see him on the field. Many were wondering a couple of months ago if he would ever step foot on a football field again, and here he is, and he looks great too. Kelly and Larry Day now in the backfield. And we get moving at the line of scrimmage. It's going to be a false start against HBU. You know, Vic Sheely talked about uh, first game jitters for both teams, really, and the pre-snap penalties are, are key. We'll see if HBU can kind of get that fixed. False start against Wesley Lewis, one of the wide receivers. Second down. There's a skill position for HBU. However, Darian Lazard just checked out. and D'Angelo Wallace has come in at the wide receiver spot. He's in the slot near side on second down and 10. Of course, Lazard transferred out of the University of Houston going into HBU last year. High snap. Fleming going to keep. Now pitch on the outside for Day and a great defensive play Larry by McMurray. Coming up is Desmond Guy, their leading tackler a year ago with 96 tackles. Coming off the corner, he's the fifth defensive back. They play a 3-3-5, but he's mostly a linebacker. And he really was up to stuff that play at the line of scrimmage for a loss. 
He's part of that secondary. And now it's third down and 12, and we get more whistles. McMurray has to call a timeout. They were going to get a penalty for having too many men on the field. So here's the McMurray defense, the linebackers for you, Chase Franklin, Ashton Campbell, and Josh Jones. They really like Jones in their defensive lineup. Out of Abilene, defensive lineman Fletcher Jones, Joshua Fincher, and Calvin Middlebrooks, the most athletic of the group. You know, great crowd on hand here for the, the home opener for the HBU Huskies. We can get a shot of the near stands here. It's packed. It's looking good. Gotta love the Mohawk. That's the style these days. <laughs> you've got you've, you've got to uh, think though that there's just a little bit more adrenaline coursing through a player's veins tonight. Opening night, you get the extra shot anyway. But opening night to open up your stadium on campus, you got to feel that these HBU guys are extremely pumped up. And until that settles down a little bit, we might see the middle errors. Sure. And last year they were playing at Straight Jesuit College Prep and had a good record over there, I might add. But there's nothing like being at home, literally, where the students can walk across campus and come enjoy some college football. Day stands in the backfield. It's third down and 12 from the 21-yard line now. Fleming looking to pass. Over the middle he goes too tall for his intended receiver. He was looking for D'Angelo Wallace coming across the middle out of the slot. And Middlebrooks had the pressure coming off the corner to force the hurried throw. Fourth down for HBU. One thing that was solid last year for HBU was their kicking game, and we'll get a chance to see it on display here as Travis Shin comes out. Transferred in from Louisiana Lafayette out of Rockwall High School. Last year in the developmental games was three for three. This one will be 28 yards. Make it 38 yards from the 28-yard line near Hash. Got plenty of distance. And the kick is good. So HBU draws first blood. And the interception, first of all, setting up a 38-yard field goal by Travis Shin. It's Houston Baptist three. And the McMurray Warhawks, nothing. We have 11.47 to play here in the opening quarter at Dunham Field at Husky Stadium. Nothing Huskies on a 38-yard field goal by Travis Shin. Following the interception by Mike Cole on the opening possession of the ball game for McMurray. Set up HBU in good field position, unable to cash it in for seven. Three men deep for the McMurray Warhawks to await Shin's kick. Paxton Grayer, Tyrese House, and Jared Smith. Shin sends it away, looking for Grayer. He'll backpedal in the end zone four yards deep and will go to an E. So they'll scrimmage first and 10 for the 20 yard line. So the first passing attempt by Matthew McHugh, not successful as it was intercepted. He had a little screen pass at first. He's one for two on the first drive. You know, some of the keys in the game here, Vic Shealy was talking about getting a strong pass rush. They did that in their first drive. Uh, didn't quite finish off that drive, but uh, did get the field goal. And they also want to win that turnover battle. As for Lance Henson and uh, McMurray, they want to control that line of scrimmage, you know, with a strong running game. That's always important when you're on the road. And they want to keep HBU's offense off balance with stunts and blitzes. And a lot of new faces out here. They need to have a cohesive unit. And I think that both teams could probably use that same line right there about a cohesive unit with new faces. Chris Simpson is the deep back. Play fake to him and bootleg for McHugh. Throwing on the near sideline. Has his man and out of bounds at the 47 yard line. Exception made by Jake Hinson. Good throw that time on the bootleg to the near sideline. Great little timing pattern right there. Watch this pass. Perfectly placed. Got the foot inbounds. Nicely done. That would have been a pro reception as well. 21-yard <laughs> pickup as they spot him out officially at the 46-yard line. So a new set of downs for the Warhawks, and that'll give them a little bit of excitement. The Warhawks return 90% of their rushing yards from a year ago. Their top three rushers. They return zero passing yards. All the quarterbacks are gone. McHugh gets the honors to start anew. On first and 10, running play. This is Simpson. 
Dodges his way straight up the middle and across midfield into HBU territory to the 48-yard line before Terrell Brown the third will bring him down. And Simpson was the top rusher in 2013 for McMurray. 842 yards on the ground. Also caught 34 passes, totaling 211 aerial uh, yards there. But uh, also watch out for Paxton Greer, another one right around 822 yards rushing in 2013. Very balanced rushing attack last season. Again, two receivers to either side, and Simpson is the back from the shotgun formation on second down and a long four. And now movement. We had two men moving, and a false start going to be charged against the Warhawks. Too many men going at the line of scrimmage. False start. Offense, number 72. It was the left tackle, Brandon Brinkman, guilty of the false start. The guys in the backfield were running around. They still had a chance to, for one of them to get set. Yeah, and again, it's it's the Jitters. Our first game for both teams, just trying to, you know, the defense is yelling out, hut, hut, and trying to get the offensive line to move. Does that really happen? It does happen. Oh, okay. <laughs> we'll get that parabolic <laughs> mic to pick it up. <laughs> it's a second down and nearly 10. From back in McCurry territory, just outside the 46. A back to either shoulder. And now we get more whistles. And another timeout for McMurray as they are all confused on offense. And Lance Hinson cannot be at all pleased by this development whatsoever. Well, McMurray has lost the last three season openers. And uh, this is the, the first game for Lance Hinson. Talked about how he coached him at the University of Mary uh, in Leavenworth, Kansas. He was there for nine years. But uh, a chance to kind of get the troops together here and get them fired up. McMurray, of course, located in Abilene, Texas. A battle of the old and the new here in tonight's ballgame. 89th football season for the McMurray Warhawks and the very first official season for the HBU Huskies here tonight. 10.08 to play here in the opening quarter. Huskies with a 3-0 lead on the first McMurray possession. Mike Cole with an interception, setting them up deep in McMurray territory. But the Huskies unable to push it in for the touchdown, settling for a 38-yard field goal by Travis Shin. So back to play we go, second down and a long 10. Two receivers to either side, and Simpson in the backfield with Matthew McHugh. His brother David McHugh on the jet sweep going to the left. And not much doing as HBU's defense is all over it. Great pursuit there by the defense across the board. Made good Aaron Benson, one of them in on the stop. Yeah, he's James Sparkman also there. Of course, Aaron Benson out of Cedar Hill, Texas, also played at the University of Texas, got the fifth year here to play at the HBU. And he has good bloodlines. You might remember his brother, the outstanding runner, or his cousin, rather. He is outstanding running back. Cedric Benson is his cousin. So now it's third down and 10 from back of the 46-yard line for the Warhawks. Five at the line of scrimmage, only four will rush. McHugh throws underneath to David McHugh. He's got the first down inside the 45 and down to the 42-yard line. Taylor Thompson and Garrett Dolan teaming up to make the stop, but not before. They picked up a dozen and a first and 10. Yeah, look at this pass play right here. Taking what the defense will give them. Dolan kind of slipped there. Did make the hard tackle at the end, though. And a first down here for McMurray. First foray into HBU territory tonight. It'll be at the 43-yard line, first and 10. Simpson remains in the backfield with Matthew McHugh. Got a wing back on the near side, Mark Tiarina. Quick out on the outside, Jarrett Smith. Stiff arms a man, on the loose at the 20, at the 10, and diving for the pylon, but out of bounds. Shoved there by Taylor Thompson. And it was not Jared Smith, it was Jake Hinson, seven, not one, making the reception on the outside. Yeah, Hinson, with, he was just a full head of steam when he caught that football. Nice job by McHugh to kind of lead his receiver. Look at that, had him basically in a still position that where he put it, got him in a position to make the catch on the run, and he picks up some great yards. Guy who followed his head coach, Lance Hinson, from the University of St. Mary in Kansas down here to McMurray. And the Warhawks have it first and goal officially at the six yard line with 8.20 to play here in the opening half. Matthew McHugh goes under center for the first time. Running play. Chris Simpson dodges a man and dives in the end zone for a touchdown. 
Very impressive drive right there by McMurray. And Simpson capping it off with a nice touchdown run. He's got some bulk. Look at the, the thunder thighs there from the Duncanville native. 5'10", 195. He looks bigger than that <laughs> as does. far as weight-wise. He might be shorter than 5'10". I was going to say about 140 of it in those thighs. <laughs> <laughs> and now Joey Silva will be on to try the point after out of the hold of David McHugh. Ball back and down. Kick up on the way. And the kick is good. So the McMurray Warhawks answer the 38-yard field goal by Travis Shin with a 75-yard touchdown march capped off by a six-yard run by Chris Simpson to take a 7-3 lead and the very first touchdown scored here at Dunham Field at Husky Stadium. Look at this great move in the hole here. Yeah, Simpson, nice little cutback right there. That was a perfectly run uh, play right there as Taylor Thompson kind of over-pursued Thompson out of Belleville, leading tackler last year for HPU. Now we get to see special teams for the HPU Huskies. And both coaches, when I talked with them earlier this week, expressed a little bit of concern on just what do you get when you run out a bunch of new guys for the first time on special teams? How can you really prepare for that? Yeah, special teams, it's, it's always it's a challenge in the first game of the season, especially when it's your season opener and your first game ever as far as at your new home stadium as well. By the way, that was a six play, 75 yard drive for McMurray. And that was the answer they needed for that field goal that HPU kicked. Dominic Barnett is on the near hash mark and Taylor Thompson on the far hash mark to wait the short pooch kick. It'll hit before the 25 yard line and go out of bounds at the 22 yard line. That's a break for HPU right there. Absolutely. And I want to see if we get a good look at this, maybe we can see this again, that if HPU didn't cause their own break, that uh, Mev edged it. He might have helped that ball out. He kind of kicked it, didn't he? I think so. <laughs> I thought I might have been seeing something there, but yeah, he might have tapped it. Let's see. Trying to help it go out of bounds. Yeah, just to make sure. Well, the ball will be placed out around the almost a midfield. So let's see. Let's get a good look here. Tom, what do you say? Oh! Right there at the 23 yard line. He got a little encouragement. So HBO scrimmage first and 10 from their own 20 to 35 yard line, trailing 7 to 3. Kelly will be in the backfield with Jonathan Fleming. Slot formation to the near side. McMurray showing blitz. Now Lazard goes in motion. Give it to Kelly on the uh, spread option, and not much doing as the McMurray Warhawks were all over it. Desmond Guy and Jonathan Fisher corralling Kelly for a gain of only a yard up to the 36-yard line. Great pursuit right there by the Warhawks defense. Three of them in the backfield in a matter of seconds. Nothing B.J. Kelly could do once he took the handoff. Ethan Fry on the near side with Lazard. Kelly stays in the backfield on second down and nine. Blitz coming this time. Fleming stands and throws deep on the far sideline. Contact at the 30-yard line, but no penalty markers down. Right there on the sunny side of the stadium where the sun On the cover, which is J.R. Arroyo. Fleming had some time to put he this did. ball up. Nice blocking up front. Good spiral, good pass. Wesley Lewis was the intended receiver. Yeah, there's the bump right there. So that's third down and nine. HPU could use the first down here. Looks like they're going to drop eight into coverage, does McMurray's Warhawk defense. It is just a three-man rush. Over the middle. Leaping attempt and incomplete up near the 40-yard line. Lazard was the intended receiver. And now penalty marker down. And McMurray is saying, what is this? But Lazard is also down at the 39-yard line. He took quite a spill, and you might get a hit on a defenseless receiver. Yeah, Lazard went down hard. His helmet hit the ground pretty hard there. Don't want to speculate, but... Uh, he remains can... on his back at the 39-yard line, just outside the big number 40. 
And that's one of those plays you'll hear receivers talk about that, that anticipation of knowing that you're about to get hit. And the coach will always tell you, hey, you're going to get hit anyway. Go make the catch. But that's easier said than done. <laughs> and you want to go for that ball. And Fleming's toss was just a little bit tall. Let's take a look at it here. See if we can tell. Once again, Fleming with good protection up front. Plenty of time to get this one off. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah, it was the yeah. second man in. Helmet to helmet. And that could draw a penalty for McMurray. And there is a flag down. Vic Sheely standing over Lazard right now, making sure his receiver's okay. He does have movement. That's good to see. He's got that left knee bent. He was prone on his back for quite a while, but now he's been able to raise the left knee. You know, I was talking with the coaching staff a couple weeks ago, and they were talking about how Lazard, one of those players, a really great team leader, comes over here to HBU from the University of Houston. Only two years left to play. One of them was last year, now this season. And, uh, he was a very highly touted player when he came out of Pearland Dawson, the first signed by the Houston Cougars. He was a quarterback and a very good one, and the Cougars moved him to outside receiver. And there was some talk about him playing quarterback here last year, but basically in the fall camp workouts, they decided to go ahead and put him in a receiver position because they wanted him to get the ball a lot. And at the time, they felt like uh, Jonathan Fleming was going to be their starter. Yeah, take a look at this hit right here. It's a helmet-to-helmet -helmet contact. Yeah, Royo right had there. the coverage, and there came the hit from the near sideline, coming inside out. Oh, yeah, that's not right. And it almost looked as though it was a number 14, and they didn't give us a number 14 defensive player. The only number 14 they have on their roster is the backup quarterback, Cy Ward. Now, I don't know if he played two ways or not. Well, we'll wait for the call because the officials get to review this play, and it could cause for an ejection from the game. Yeah, and again, Ryan Williams. And again, all the all the reviews that we are seeing, they are seeing up in the review booth. Ryan Williams, 6'1", junior out of Corinth, Texas. Ryan Williams, well, he was supposed to be number 22. <laughs> <laughs> That would make sense, a starting safety coming up. He only played six in six games last year as he was hampered by injuries most of the season. However, uh, he was named to the second Rooting team. Rooting on the field is confirmed. Number 14 is disqualified for target. First down of the 15-yard penalty for Houston Dodgers. So Ryan Williams is gone for the game. And there's a lot of game left, 7.24 here in the first quarter. Well, and let's let's talk about that targeting. I mean, the ball's thrown high, first of all. So right. he's kind of put in a position where he's trying to make a tackle and make a play on the ball at the same time. But the helmet-to-helmet -helmet part of it, the contact right there, it's very obvious in this day and age of football with the severity of concussions. That's got to be something that's, that's got to be controlled. And, and that's why he's being ejected from the game. So with a 15-yard walk-off, take the ball into McMurray territory at the 49-yard line, first and 10 for Jonathan Fleming and the Huskies. Kelly will be to his left, sweep that way, looking for a block on the corner. And he'll go down at the line of scrimmage. Now it's number 22 on defense, who we thought was Ryan Williams. But we'll have to find out exactly who that was that was disqualified, number 14, just to make sure. There was some early word that it was Ryan Williams, but that looked like Williams coming up for the safety spot. So no gain on the play. It'll be second down and 10, still from the 49-yard line of McMurray territory. Just got word, Tom, that Cy Ward was the player ejected from it the game. It was Ward, so he's playing both ways. Okay. Fleming to pass. Steps up in the pocket. Will not be able to get away. Brought down by Chase Franklin. Linebacker on the blitz coming from the near sideline. And a loss of five back to the 46-yard line in Husky territory. Important for the offense to kind of get some rhythm going, establish a running game, try to get some movement off that offensive line. So far, HBU unable to do that. They, they did get the field goal early on, but part of that was due to the interception. Right. Kevin Butts has come in at the left guard position for T.C. Jones on this third down and 15. A 
A lot of time for Fleming throwing it deep and over the head of the intended receiver, D'Angelo Wallace, inside the 30-yard line of McMurray. Double covered on the play. And again, Fleming getting time to throw on third down, but with eight men dropping into coverage, McMurray doing a good job of not giving him any open receivers. And you have to kind of wonder after last year with Kadarius Baker getting so much playing time. I mean, he came in after about, I think it was the second drive against Sam Houston State in the opener last year. You know, how, how long is that leash? Is it a short leash? Is Baker, you know, going to be the, the player that can just come up and quickly be ready? I mean, he played all last season. Christian Guzman in to do the punting. Kind of a rugby style. It'll hit at the 30, take an HBU bounce to the 10, to the 5. Oh. And they will stop it at about the one-yard line, maybe the two. Great special teams coverage there by Taylor Thompson. Ball down by Thompson. Christian Guzman there out of Brookshire, Texas, with a nice kick. That's that rugby style. You're starting to see that more and more, especially at the collegiate level. It can be very effective at times, obviously, right there. So with 5.54 to play, McMurray takes over. They lead by a score of 7-3. to three. But they are pinned all the way in the shadow of their own end zone at the one-yard line. I remember a Monday night run of 99 yards once upon a time. Oh, yes. Some guy named Tony Dorsett. Dorsett, that's right. For the Dallas Cowboys. Happened up at the Metrodome in Minnesota. <laughs> McHugh goes under center. Play fake, look oh. out, he's gonna go down for safety. Coming off the corner, Josh Jones. And he just went around his man like there was nobody there. And McHugh never had a chance. Vic Sheely talked about the pass rush and a player like Josh Jones, a great acquisition here this off season and he has been lights out. You can see the, the pressure he applied on the far side. Watch, Watch him come him around the, the defensive corner. end. And there he is, making the hit. Matt Newby, Five the offensive right tackle, never had a chance. Jones was around him before he ever knew anything was happening, and the safety makes it a 7-5 to five ball game with 5.48 to play, and HBU's going to get the ball back as well. That's the gift of the safety, being able to put the two points on the board and give your offense the football. That's the, the doctor ordered right there for HBU. That's a big play. That's a big-time play. The pass rush being key. Vic talked about the importance of making sure that they got a better pass rush this season, and it's already evident right there. There's a very interesting thing in today's ball game. You have number 46, Josh Jones, the defensive end for the HBU Huskies who just made that sack, a 6'3", 240-pounder out of Pearland High School. But for McMurray, you also have number 48, Josh Jones, who is an inside linebacker, a three-year senior, a three-letter winner senior out of Abilene High School in Abilene, who's 5'11", 228. So we're going to be calling Josh Jones a lot, but he doesn't run back and forth. There aren't two of them. There's only one for each team. So now it'll be a free kick. And Thompson and Barnett will again await this one. It'll be a placement kick for Joey Silva. Off the tee it goes. And it'll be Barnett to take it at the 30-yard line. Cannot get by the first man. Good special teams play coming up out of the secondary. J.R. Arroyo making the stop after a 10-yard return. But HBU has good field position at their own 40-yard line to scrimmage trailing 7-5 to five here in the first quarter. Well, you know, Roger Henshaw, the defensive coordinator for HBU, not only talked about getting that good, strong pass rush, but uh, getting some secondary sacks, too, where the secondary drops back, has some good coverage, and maybe that extra second for McHugh cost him there in the end zone. He was looking downfield and goes down with that sack by Josh uh, He Jones. didn't have much chance because uh, Jones was off the corner like a shot. Fleming still the quarterback, and this time it is Craig Bell Jr. to his left. Getting to see all the running backs here in the opening quarter. Bell's got the handoff, and up the middle he goes for a short gain of a couple of yards. Brought down by the nose tackle Joshua Fisher and Desmond Guy. And I think one of the strengths for the Huskies last year was being able to rotate B.J. Kelly, Larry Day, have these players kind of coming in and out of the game and giving each other some rest. And uh, you see the importance of having Craig Bell also out of Sweeney. Second down and eight 
Shotgun formation. Bell to the right. He's got the toss. Looking for a block. Has one. In to McMurray territory he goes. And down to about the 44, maybe the 43-yard line. Goes Craig Bell, Jr. J.R. Arroyo finally had to bring him down in the secondary. But not before a nice pickup by Bell. Nice blocking up front by the offensive line. And Craig Bell with the nice cutback right there, picking up the first down and more inside McMurray territory. They spot him down at the 43-yard line. And Bell will stay on as the running back. He will have some help in the backfield. As Maxwell Brown comes in to block for him. And it's Bell trying to get outside near sideline. He'll get a couple. Close to the 40-yard line before he'll be brought down. Chase Franklin making the stop. Had some help from Jeff Arnold. D'Angelo Wallace there had the block downfield. He's out of Cibolo Steel. But unable to contain the block by the time Bell got there. And he's playing the spot normally manned by Darian Lazard, who went out on that last series with that helmet-to-helmet -helmet hit. Second down and eight for HBU. They're in McMurray territory at the 41-yard line. Fleming going to throw. Near sideline has Wallace, and he'll be out of bounds right near the first down marker. Should have it as they mark him out at the 32-yard line for a pickup of nine. That's a great passing play right there, building the confidence of Fleming. Nice little route right there by Wallace as he gets open near the sideline. Good Jones. hard throw by Fleming. T.C. Jones and Kevin Butts continue to rotate at that left left guard position for HBU. High snap. Running play. Bell's got some room right up the gut. He goes behind his center, Jacob Aguiar and T.C. Jones. And will get close to the first down inside the 25-yard the line down to the 24. Yeah, Fletcher Jones on the tackle there. But a nice drive currently going on here for HBU, especially on the ground. Quick throw on the outside for Wallace. Eludes one man, eludes two down the sideline inside the 15 and out of bounds near the 10 yard line goes D'Angelo Wallace. Ryan Williams finally had to knock him out after Wallace was able to shake two attempted tackles. Right when Wallace made that catch, good block downfield to free him open. And then Wallace cuts the outside, almost scored a touchdown. Ball at the 10 yard line will be first and goal for the Huskies. Bell's got the handoff, looks for Uma, cut back to his left, will get him halfway there to the five-yard line before he'll be brought down by Josh Jones, the McMurray Josh Jones, not to be confused <laughs> with the HBU Josh Jones. Well, they're keeping the defense guessing right now. That's what you want. You're the offensive coordinator for HBU. HBU, you want to keep that defense guessing. And, uh, Scott Smith doing a nice job here on the offensive side of play calling here for HBU. And running in some fresh offensive linemen for this play. It'll be second down and goal for the five. And it'll be B.J. Kelly now, the running back to the right shoulder. Maxwell Brown to block, offset left. Fleming may be changing the play here. Play clock at one. Did he get it away in time? I don't think he did. Getting a call for delay of game. And that hurts so close to the end zone here. Can't afford mistakes like that when you're inside the not red zone. Not in the red zone, no. Not in the red zone. Gives coaches gray hairs. And there is a clock right there by the goal post. So. Kenneth Bibbins checking in. Maxwell Brown will come out. Now they're going to run a stack formation on both sides for the wide receivers. Kelly remains the back on second and goal from the 10. Fleming looks to throw. Throwing the fade on the far side for Bibbins, and it's incomplete. No, check that. It wasn't Bibbins. It was Wesley Lewis, 81. Not Bibbins, 85. Arroyo Lewis, had good coverage for the Warhawks. Lewis has some great height. I love the play call right there, just unable to come down with it. But anytime you get that advantage in height in that corner of the end zone, you want to go for it. You can see Lewis there. It goes up high, and I think he'd tell you he probably should have had that one. So now it's third down and goal from the 10 yard line. Three receivers to the near side. Kelly stays in the backfield with Fleming. Three man front for the Warhawks. That's all they're gonna bring. Fleming over the middle through the hands of 
D'Angelo Wallace, the five yard line, but he wasn't going to score anyway. And so it'll set up another field goal opportunity, but this one for Travis Shin could put HBU back in front. Well, that was almost an interception by Marlon Jackson. That ball kind of came off his, his number there, but it was tipped. So now Travis Shin, perfect in his HBU career, three for three last year, one for one tonight. This one will be from the 18-yard line, a 28-yard attempt. Good snap and hold, ball up on its way, and the kick is good. So for the second time tonight, HBU has the lead. This time on a 28-yard field goal by Travis Shin, it's HBU 8 and McMurray 7. 2.07 left here in the opening quarter at Dunham Field at Husky Stadium. Seven. Two first quarter field goals from Travis Shin, 28 yards and 38 yards. The 28 yarder giving us our current score of 8 to 7. Makes it a safety by Josh Jones, who sacked the quarterback, Matthew McHugh, in the end zone for a safety for the eight HBU points. McMurray getting their points in a six yard TD run by Chris Simpson. And there's Shin's kickoff. End over end. And Grayer again, about four or five yards deep in the end zone, will go to an E. Well, I like what I see in Travis Shin. He, uh, he nice kicks leg. the ball yes, deep. A couple field goals here in the early going. And based on the streamers on the goalpost here at uh, Dunham Field at Husky Stadium, not much wind helping him. What, what wind there is does seem to be blowing from right to left at the Huskies' back, but it does not seem to be a factor in today's game so far. Great environment here on the campus of HBU. Just off Fondren, off the Southwest Freeway and the largest city in the state of Texas, Houston. And so here comes Matthew McHugh in the Warhawk offense. And he will have Paxton Grayer to his right. And two make it three receivers to the far sideline on this first and 10 from the 25 yard line. McHugh's going to keep, and he's not going very far. Dragged down after a gain of maybe a yard on the play. Josh Jones, the man who had the safety on the last possession, all over McHugh again. And right now, McHugh is eating up Matt Newby on the right tackle spot. You can see Josh Jones is a player. He looks like a man amongst boys out here, some of the plays he's making. Getting off his block quickly, making the tackle. Transferred in from Northeast Oklahoma A&M. Second down and a long eight for the Warhawks. McHugh with Grayer to his left this time. And again, three receivers left. Looking to throw near sideline. Has his man Jared Smith across the 30, and he'll be run out of bounds. Close to the first down marker, and he'll have the first down at the 36-yard line before he'll be run out. Mike Cole, one of those on the play. With that play right there, Jared Smith becomes the all-time leading receiver in McMurray history, so a little bit of recognition for them. Calvin Thomas Jr. also helping out. We kind of spotlighted Jared early on in our in our opening of the broadcast. And well, a guy who uh, comes up with uh, 61 catches for 846 yards and uh, is among the career leaders of receptions and yardage in all-time McMurray history. It's a good reason to spotlight him. That's right, he deserves it. Under center is Matthew McHugh on first and 10 for the Warhawk 36. Gonna throw over the middle, batted away from Jake Henson. Great defensive play, Mike Cole over there. Had some help from Latravian Gee. Fantastic job right there on the defensive side of the ball. The defensive line getting some pressure once again. You see Jones coming around the corner, but look at that, knocking that ball loose. It was just a step late. The safeties, Cole and G teaming up on that pass over the middle for Henson. 48 seconds left here in the first quarter. 
Huskies with a second down, or make that the Warhawks with a second down and 10 at their own 36. From under center, Matthew McHugh. Running play, Grayer. Will get across the 40 to the 41 yard line before he'll be wrestled down. Terrell Brown, the third. One of the first on the scene for the Husky defense. By Grayer. To the 41 yard line. Kind of closing in on the end of the first quarter. The HBU defense has been very solid, with the exception of the one long drive there by with Chris Simpson scoring the touchdown. They did not start the 40-second play clock, and the official clock is down to 15 seconds, meaning the Warhawks don't have to snap it if they don't want to. And it looks as though they're going to let it run down as we're down to six seconds and five seconds here in the first quarter. An interesting first quarter indeed. HBU taking advantage of a turnover and a safety to come up with eight points. 175 yard scoring drive for the Warhawks for their seven. It's HBU eight, McMurray seven. Stay tuned. Second quarter action is straight ahead from Dunham Field at Husky Stadium. It's a new era of football here in Houston, Texas. As we take a look at the Williams Tower in the Galleria area, standing out among the crowd, Houston Baptist debuting as an NCAA football program tonight against McMurray with an 8 to 7 lead. As we get ready to start the second quarter. As we get ready to get underway, it'll be third down and five for McMurray from their own 41 yard line. Pretty good seat over there at the Williams Tower looking back this way. Yeah, you could see a lot from there. Two receivers to either <laughs> side. McHugh quick over the middle, has his man. It's stripped away from Jared Smith. He recovered it at the 46-yard line. Are they going to call it incomplete? Pass is complete nope. Smith. They're going to say it was a completion, a fumble, and a recovery all by Jared Smith at the 46-yard line and enough to move the sticks. And it was Mike Cole, the guy who had the interception, who stripped the ball away. Look at the pass rush here by HBU but quickly getting rid of it. That's the perfect play call when you've got an aggressive defense with a hot pursuit. And Jarrett doing a nice job of falling back on that one. He was very lucky to get the ball back in his arms off the artificial surface here. So a new set of downs for McMurray at their own 46 yard line. Grayer will shift to the right. And on the left hand side is the tight end Tiarina. And now we get whistles. Delay of game against McMurray. McMurray's had a little trouble getting into their offense here at times. Yeah, a few penalties here in the early going. But the statistics pretty even. Uh, on Two both penalties sides. for each team in the first quarter. And time of possession about even 735 for McMurray and 725 for the HBU Huskies. On first and 15, it's Grayer up the middle, and finally bear hugged down by Garrett Dole in the middle linebacker <laughs> after a gain of about six on the play. You know, if you, if you get to talk to Garrett Dolan, I mean, he seems like if, if he didn't play football, he might be like a steer roper or something. <laughs> <laughs> and that's exactly what he looked like he was trying to do on that play. Rodeo Houston, here we come. Matthew McHugh in the first quarter, five of seven passing for 81 yards, but he did have that one interception that led to the the opening points of the ball game for HBU. Second down and nine now from the 47 yard line for the Warhawks. McHugh drops back, throws over the middle, through the hands of Jared Smith, the intended receiver near the 35 yard line. He was covered there on the play by Prince Sam. Yeah, Smith was open on that play. He knows he should have caught this one. 
Good protection up front. Look at Smith, hits him right in his hands. He was looking downfield already. Yeah, he was trying to figure out where the next move was going to go. Could he get to the house from there? Instead, it'll be third down and nine. What a great name, Prince Sam. He's out of Allen, Texas. Enrollment there at that high school, about 5,000. About 9 million, isn't it? <laughs> man, oh man. Largest band in the state. On third down, McHugh's got time, gonna tuck and run, right up the middle he goes, across midfield and slides down for the first down inside the 45 yard line, close to the 42. A scramble of a dozen yards for Matthew McHugh and a first and 10 for McMurray. Well, when you get a pass rush, sometimes a quarterback can take advantage if he can just get away and find some room up the middle, and that's exactly what McHugh does, picking up the first down. Great slide. job by the McMurray offensive line of turning everybody to the outside to open up the middle for McHugh to tuck and run. Yeah, great observation there. Anytime you can, and, and good job by McHugh to find that opening and go for it. Grayer will take the first down handoff, slant to his right, get inside the 35 and have Run close to first Gray. down yardage near the 33 yard line. And now McMurray's offense starting to fire up just a little bit. Yeah, concerning because a lot of the yards coming right up the middle behind those tackles. The tackle just short of the 33 yard line, so officially a nine yard gain. It'll be third down, or second down, less than one. Coming up here for McMurray. They brought a big blocker in, Daquan Bratcher. Big load, he'll be on the left shoulder. Prior to this drive, only 18 rushing yards net. And again, it's Grayer, and he'll have the first down as he rumbles for about eight more yards to the 25-yard line. Latravian G making the tackle for HBU. Yeah, the Warhawks are getting some good push up front from their offensive line. When you get that, the playbook opens up. So they started this drive. At their own 25, they've taken it 50 yards so far to the 25-yard line in HBU territory. Grayer stays in the left shoulder of Matthew McHugh. And timeout. Timeout. That'll be the third and final timeout McMurray. for McMurray. Third and final timeout. Yeah, they've been soaking up those timeouts here. And again, it's either been confusion getting the play in or the right personnel in or the right personnel lined up in the right positions. It's something on the offensive side that's led them to use all three of their timeouts very early here in the second quarter, 11.46 to play. And I don't care which level you're at, high school, college, pro, when you have a new coaching staff and they're bringing in new plays, you see new that terminology. A lot. Sure. That does happen. So what is... HBU have to do here defensively to keep McMurray from going in the end zone and taking the lead in this ball game. Yeah, yeah, for one, stopping the run right up the middle for sure. On this drive, McMurray has been running at will right up the gut. Anytime your offensive line gets that kind of push, that just sets up all types of plays. They can use play action if they need to, but I think McMurray right now is thinking, well, we're just going to stay with the running game right here. It's up to HBU to prove they can stop it. Matthew McHugh deploys three receivers to the near side and one, Jared Smith to the far side. McHugh back to pass, throwing on the far sideline for Jared Smith, leaping catch at the five yard line and pushed out of bounds at the four. Goes Jared Smith, Prince Sam on the coverage. Yeah, Smith is the go-to receiver. He's a big part of their offense. You see how he kind of fires up the huddle when he gets back. Good protection up front once again. The offensive line, they do a nice job of pushing those defensive ends outward. Kind of leave that crease right open for McHugh, and he finds it. That good target right there, wide open again. So it'll be first and goal from the five-yard line. Again, Bratcher comes in to be an extra blocker. And he'll go as a wing back on the near sideline. Paxton Grayer is the running back. Give the jet sweep to Jared Smith trying to go around the corner. He's got the room and he's got the touchdown. Jared Smith on a jet sweep from right to left. Puts McMurray back out on top at 13 to eight with an extra point try to come. Jared Smith, great looking run to the outside. He's out of Abilene High School. That six foot, 215 frame can really move. Made some great catches on this drive. Caps it off with the touchdown run around the corner. That's a great play for him. He's got all that speed, can get to the outside quickly. That's tough to contain. 
matches his rushing total from a year ago. He had one rush for five yards. Point after try for Joey Silva. Good snap and hold, and oh. the ball is blocked. <laughs> it's a live ball. And it is live, and it'll be wrestled down at the 18-yard line. It was Prince Sam who came off the corner and made the block. So we get a timeout with our new score, McMurray 13, HBU 8. 11.06 to play here in the first half at Dunham Field at HBU Stadium. Six to play first half here at Dunham Field at Husky Stadium. The McMurray Warhawks with their second 75-yard touchdown drive of the night capped off by a five-yard run by Jared Smith. Point after try was blocked, so our score is 13 to eight here with 11.06 to go. Well, Grant Taft would be proud of that drive right there, a McMurray alum, and good ball movement both on the ground, through the air. A nice drive, but hey, that Prince Sam block could prove to be big later. Those extra points. <laughs> Kick on the way by Silva, taken by an up man. A fair catch signaled for the 15 yard line, and that was Maxwell Brown, the backup tight end, who hauled it in, and they'll put him down at the 16 yard line. So Joey Silva not trying to kick deep, trying to hit that high short kick and allow his coverage team plenty of time to get down and cover, and so far it's been effective. Yeah, special teams so far so good really for both teams the, the penalties before the pre-snap penalties are what are hurting McMurray in this game and HBU's done a pretty good job on their side that's always concerning when you're your first game Jonathan Fleming is going all the way for HBU at quarterback and empties the backfield three receivers to the top side of the formation quick outside throw and it's Terrence Peters who goes down after just a short gain the young true freshman out of Stratford High School that they really like here, and that Vic Shealy's gonna try and get involved in the play as much as he can. You might even see him line up as a running back tonight. Important for HBU to answer that touchdown drive. You wanna get that momentum back on your side. I need better plays than that one right there. Gain of only a yard, it'll be second down and nine. Fleming will have Peters in the backfield with him to the right shoulder. Fake it to Peters. Fleming has time. Outside left, he throws. Has his man across the 20 and out to the 21-22 yard line goes Ethan Fry. Ethan Fry out of Cedar Park High School. Lines up as a receiver. When he was at Cedar Park, he scored a touchdown in a Wildcat formation. He'll tell you all about it when you talk to him. But uh, he's really improved a lot since last season. They like what they're seeing out of him. Five yard pickup to the 21 yard line. It'll be third down and five here. Peters stays in the game as the running back. Fleming with time, flushed out of the pocket to his right. In trouble now and unloads at the last minute. He did not get it to the line of scrimmage. There was a receiver in the area because he was hit as he was thrown. They did not require him to reach the line of scrimmage with the throw. Yeah, he had a man open there for a minute. Watch the bottom of your screen. Uh, Fleming rolling out right now, but at this point, you've got to go ahead and get rid of it. He holds on to it just a little bit too long. By the time he did get rid of it, the receiver was no longer open. Andrew Sanchez with the pressure. So now for the second time tonight, Christian Guzman, the punt. He had a good rugby style one the last time. Jared Smith and Hinson are the deep men. This way, a normal kick, a high spiraling <laughs> attempt. And Hinson will take it at the 37 yard line. Gets away from the first wave, still on his feet, back inside the 35, and down he goes. Great coverage by the punt team for HBU. Yeah, but a penalty flag here after the play. Some arm swinging right here. 
Uh, movement right there on that uh, return, but uh, no yards to show for it. Just lost yardage there. Yeah. <laughs> but might have won some awards on uh, Dance Fever or something. <laughs> The flag is at the 40-yard line, and the officiating crew huddles. And we await for them to tell us exactly what they saw. Could be offsetting. Two players were definitely Johnny, Johnny jostling a bit. Introduce well, they were dancing. We'll keep to that theme. <laughs> Are you a fan of Dancing with the Stars? <laughs> Watch it a time or two. Ooh. It he was said disqualification. Number 15, I believe, on would be HBU. Tyler Simpson, backup defensive back. Yeah, Tyler Stevenson, Stevenson cornerback out of Lancaster. Transferred in from Baylor. And uh, Coach Vic Shealy talked very highly of him by coming in here. You know, he's built this program primarily with his own people, people who've come here and are going to stay here from the beginning and not bring in a bunch of transfers. Been very judicious about which transfers he accepts. So the ball near midfield for the Warhawks, the hand side handoff to Simpson, and not much doing on that running play. Little trickeration in the backfield, but not fooled was the HBU defense. Jonathan Buffin coming up on the safety spot to make the stop. Tackle by Buffin. Yeah, they also had a transfer come in from Oregon as well. Right. Eric Amaka, he was uh, out of Arlington, Texas. Arlington Martin went and played in Oregon and now is here at HBU. But you hate to see that. Stevenson with all that experience and to get basically ejected from the game on a on a silly play. Really. Right. Simpson remains the back. Matthew McHugh throws outside for Jarrett Smith, looking for a block, could not get one. Penalty marker is down, but Jarrett wow. Smith is dragging two men forward. He took two men with him almost 10 yards down the field, but it may all be for naught as there's a penalty marker down near the point of the reception. How about Jarrett Smith and that strength with his legs? Wow. Ball is spotted at the 39. It was the tackle. Brendan Brinkman. Smith makes the catch, but here we go. Here comes the, the movement. One player coming with him, two, three, four. <laughs> wow. Buffin was hanging out for dear life, but he was having no trouble, or uh, having a lot of trouble, rather, trying to wrestle that steer to the ground. That's why you don't tackle high. You got to tackle low. Sometimes you don't have any choice, but you don't want to give the other player a chance to show his leg strength off. So the walk-off goes back to the 40-yard line. It'll be second down and 19. Three receivers out on the near side. Running play for Chris Simpson. Slipped and fell as he tried to make a cut right at the 40-yard line. Run by Simpson. Yeah, Simpson's got a lot of strength, but slipped right there. There was a little bit of rain in the area earlier today. Field could be a little bit damp from that. Of course, Houston always fairly humid this time of year. <laughs> well, it, it, it could have also been the high gloss paint for the line of scrimmage that just <laughs> tripped him up too, right as he planted that foot on the 40-yard line stripe. So now third down and long. Two receivers to either side. Simpson stays in the backfield with Matthew McHugh. Setting up the screen for Simpson near side. Has some blockers. Got across midfield to the 49-yard line in HBU territory, but that's not nearly enough for the first and 10. Prince Sam and Garrett Dolan team up to make the tackle on the play. A gain of about nine on the play, but they needed twice that to get the first and 10. Sometimes in situations like that, McMurray thinking, you know, we may not get 18 yards, but let's at least gain some some field position here and pick up 10 yards or so and we'll punt. You know, it's a play where you get it to one of your best skilled players in Simpson. If he breaks a tackle or two, you have a chance. Kind of a low risk play. Sure. Right. And those screens, I tell you, seems like about half the time they break for big plays, you know, the screen pass. And again, we get whistles on the play. Prince Sam. <laughs> Yeah, HBU uh, they had, had too 12 many, guys on the too field. Many men on the field. Now, if you're McMurray, you've got to think about possibly going for it on the 44-yard line. You only need three yards for the first down. 
or you can put it in the hands of your punter who is David McHugh and try and pin HBU deep. I'd watch for a fake right here. David McHugh had 47 punts a year oh. ago. <laughs> and here comes the fake trying to go outside, and he won't get there. He will not get there. Nice job, well, Coach Bauer. You know, hey. When you're inside the opponent's territory and you're, you don't have to go too far for the first down, it just screams fake. David McHugh is also one of their slot receivers, does the punting. And this was a fake all the way. Direct snap. Trying to go on outside to the right side. And Cody Moncure right there, first one to trip him up as he tried to go across the 45. And so HBU gets great field position at their own 43-yard line to start trailing 13 to 8 with 704 to play here in the opening half Had they snapped that to the up back they might have gotten that one punter was too far back <laughs> Fletcher has BJ Kelly to his left shoulder in the shotgun on first and 10 whistles on the play gonna be a false start against HBU left tackle Hunter Barron Richard freshman out of Montgomery. And that makes the play calling just a little bit tougher for Scott Smith. Now first and 15. You just, you have to, it's almost like it takes the run out of the equation. <laughs> first down and 15 for the Huskies at the 38 yard line. Three man front for McMurray. Two receivers to either side. Fleming with the snap. Steps up. Looking downfield. Throws. And in and out of the hands of the intended receiver. And that was Davis. Iannaccio. Yeah, he was open right there. At a Houston. Six foot four, 200 pounds. Westside High School. I'm thinking the lights might have gotten his eyes. He was staring right into that light. Yeah, oh, that ball was deflected. He got tipped. Well, there it goes. 22 Second players. down and 15. <laughs> <laughs> Back to pass again, Fleming over the middle underneath for D'Angelo Wallace across the 45 and up near midfield he goes where he'll be brought down. Reception by Wallace. Ashton Campbell, the linebacker, brings him down. I've been very impressed with the play of D'Angelo Wallace. Made some big He's plays here in the here early. quite nicely for the injured Darian Lazard. Picked up five extra yards right there with the extra effort. Nice job. That'll help out the OC. Third and not so long now. Third and down five. about six. Mm -hmm. Fleming with the snap, swings it out of the backfield. Whoa, and blown up at the spot. The Corey and Johnson. He came out of the backfield and said, hello. My goodness. Yeah, DeCorian Johnson, he's out of Houston, so a chance to play in front of some family and friends, and that's a big boy play right there. Watch DeCorian on the top side of your screen here. Comes off his man and makes the pop. Wow. B.J. Kelly never had a chance to get around him either. By about the time he looked the ball into his arms, he was being turned upside down. He had his Warhawk big boy pants on on that hit. <laughs> that's how you tackle right there. So Christian Guzman on the punt for the third time tonight. Sends this one away, end over end to the far sideline, and out of bounds inside the 30. Let's see where they spot it out. Right at the 30 yard line, or the 25 yard line. Check that. Here's an opportunity here for HPU to grab the momentum. Five minutes and 30 seconds to play here in the first half, down by five. A chance to put together a good drive and see if they can go into the locker room with a little bit of momentum. I call this the danger zone if you're HBU's defense because both of the Warhawks scoring drives have been 75 yards in length. Yeah, that's good and again, point. they start at the 25-yard line. So we'll see what happens for Matthew McHugh and the Warhawks here. Looking over a four-man front. He fumbled the snap. It's loose on the ground. Picked up by HBU and down inside the 10-yard line. Aaron Benson. Coming off the corner, makes the recovery. It was a bad snap. McHugh could not corral it. And Benson scooped it up and went to the turf. Let's see what happened. Might be a flag. Oh, 
What nice. was that? Yeah, Benson recovered it, but then he fumbled it again. Watch this. He picks up the ball right here, but then he fumbles it somewhere in the last part. There it is. Oh, it's on the ground yeah. right there. I did not see it come out when so Benson went to the ground at the seven-yard line. That ball was fumbled twice. That's why they, it's, it's coming out as he goes to the ground because he left it behind him, and it's Derek Baldishweiler who makes the saving recovery for the McMurray Warhawks. That's what a break. Why, that's why they want those defensive linemen to just fall on it. Don't try to pick it up. You've got tape all over your hands. It's kind of hard to, to yeah, run with the ball. Yeah, but you your name is Benson, and your, brother scored, your cousin <laughs> scored all those touchdowns. And you wanted to try and be just like him. So first and ten for McMurray, this time back at their own seven-yard line. Nothing doing, and a flag is down. Run by Grayer. Grayer was the runner. He was stopped for a loss of one, plus a marker came down in the middle of the sea of humanity. Holding on, man. Holding on there, coach. Oh. Number 79. After this is to the goal. First down. I think Vic, Vic Shealy wants to decline that penalty since it was a loss of one. Yes. The whole penalty has been declined. Yeah, he'd rather second take down. the down there second and make it second down and 11 rather than first and 14. There's a good look at Vic Shealy there. Coach defensive backs and the defense over there at Kansas. And given a contract extension earlier this week that'll take him through the 2017 2018 seasons here at HBU. It's been a great marriage, Vic Sheely and athletic director Steve Boniacci and the president Robert Sloan getting this football program off the ground. So now on second down and 11, the cue from under center going to throw from his own end zone. On the far outside, over the head of the that intended receiver, Jared Smith. Smith. He was covered there by Dominique Barnett. Up third down and 11. It's a big play right here, third Barnett and 11. The HBU would love to get another crack at the end zone here before the, the half. Their defense with a chance to force a, a three and out here. And basically with the penalty and the incomplete pass, no time coming off the clock. They got the ball with 5.30 left. We've only used 14 seconds here. So to leave HBU, who has all three timeouts remaining, plenty of time to get something done. And maybe make Benson feel a little bit better for uh, dropping that ball yes. a while back. <laughs> so now it's third down and 11 from the seven yard line. McHugh setting up the screen outside. Across the 10 to the 15 to the 20. Still on his feet to the 30. Still on the run to midfield. Broke a tackle. Going down the far sideline and finally wrestled down inside the five yard line is Paxton Grayer. What a run by Grayer after that a little swing pass out of the backfield. Big play right there by Paxton Grayer out of Abilene. And just a killer if you're HBU on a third and 11 play. A little screen pass here and it works to perfection. Check out the blocking downfield. Big offensive line. Good push there on the outside. One more block there. Got to make a tackle right here, though, if you're HBU. And another block. And missed another tackle there at midfield. Took it all the way down to the four-yard line. Running play, and Grayer's got nothing doing this time. HBU quickly across the line of scrimmage to bust that play up for a loss of two. Josh Jones and Taylor Thompson teaming up to make the stop. I think that Jones kind of likes the spotlight down here on this side of the field. It's where he had the safety sack. He's made some big plays down here. 89 yards on the swing pass. But this time a loss of four takes it all the way back to the eight yard line where it'll be second down and goal. Approaching the four minute mark here in the first half, McMurray with the 13 to eight lead. Simpson is now the running back. Movement at the line of scrimmage. Could be a false start on the left guard, Rafael Gallo. Yep. Both teams, especially McMurray, has kind of shot themselves in the foot with some penalties at inopportune times. Sure. So now you started this at first and goal at the four. Now you have second and goal from back at the 13. So you've lost nine yards here on a running play and a penalty. Jake Henson to the far side. Two receivers to the near side, and Simpson is the back for Matthew McHugh. Going to pull it down, run to his right. 
now has to run and get knocked out of bounds by Dolan. Short gain on the play. They'll spot him at the 11-yard line. He picked up two. It'll be third down and goal from that point. Nice play by Garrett Dolan, kind of stringing it out. Watch him come up as block number 40. Getting the good push on McHugh out of bounds. Great angle of attack on the quarterback as well. Three and a half now to go in the first half. McMurray with a five-point lead trying to add to it here before the intermission. One receiver to the near side. Simpson stays in the backfield with McHugh on third and goal from the 11-yard line. Blitz coming from HBU. Throw on the fade for Jared Smith. In and out of his hands. Well defended on the outside by Prince Sam. Did a great job of waiting for the ball to get there and then pinning the receiver's arms so he could not get possession of that ball. Yeah, fantastic play right there by Prince Sam out of Allen. Let's take a look this one more time. It's going to be fourth down now. Watch Prince. Good timing. Turns around at the right time and just tips it away. So now we'll have a field goal try from Joey Silva. Silva had his last PAT attempt blocked. He will try this field goal from the 18-yard line, a 28-yard attempt for the far hash mark. Ball back and down, kick up on the way. Oh. Hit the upright and deflects away. So if you're HBU, no harm, no foul. <laughs> and once again, Prince Sam was coming off the corner, and he almost got there in time to block it. Timeout on the field, 2.58 to play here in the first half. It's McMurray 13 and HBU 8. College football coming your way from Dunham Field at Husky Stadium in Houston. Huskies dodged a bullet as a 28-yard field goal attempt by Joey Silva hits the left upright and bounces awry. So our score remains 13 to 8 in favor of McMurray. And HBU takes over at their own 20. Swing it on the near sideline for Wallace. D'Angelo Wallace and tried to run before he had the ball. And the ball flutters to the turf incomplete. And Wallace picks up the ball and slams it into the turf saying, man, I know better than that. You know, if you're the Huskies, you have to feel pretty fortunate, especially there's not many drives that involve an 89-yard play where they don't come away with at least three points. Right. So now it's second down and 10 for Jonathan Fleming and company. Inside handoff with some running room is Larry Day. Across the 25 as he pushes forward to near first down yardage. J.R. Arroyo makes the stop for McMurray. A gain of nine to the 29 yard line. It'll be third down and one for the Huskies. will try and run with some tempo here with 235 left until halftime. And they have all three timeouts remaining. Day's got the handoff again. Slants over the left side. He'll have the first down to move the sticks. About a five yard gain close to the 34 yard line when all is said and done. You know, a lot of fans like this early, this up tempo, if you will, in the closing minutes of the first half. Some will say, why don't they just run that all the time? <laughs> but in this case right here, you practice this every day. See if they can make it work here in the final two and a half minutes. Day remains the back. High snap, give it to him, trying to sweep right side. Trying to cut back inside and picks up nearly five yards on the play before he goes Day down. And a marker is also down. Might have a holding call on Maxwell Brown. Yep. He hooked his man on the corner. That allowed the cutback run for Day. The officiating crew not, not missing much on the field. They've had the, the yellow hanky out a few times today. But they've done a nice job. So mark the ball back to the 26-yard line. Let's see if we can pick it up on the replay. Watch 55. Brown right here, down here at the bottom. Okay. Yeah. Got hooked up with his man, Josh Jones. There might have been two holds on that play. <laughs> <laughs> you mean holding happens every play? So it's first and 18. Again, a bad snap. Fleming takes it down, will keep it himself, get across the 30, out to about the 32-yard line. 
run by Fleming carries the ball up to the 32. Chase Franklin will make the stop the on the play. Gets the It'll first be second time. down to the dozen. First time Fleming has taken off on a play. Just, just good to kind of see him doing that. Well, I think it was due to the fact it was a bad snap. It may have been a handoff that was going to go left, and the snap went to his right, so he couldn't get it done. Day stays in the backfield with him. Two receivers to either side. Give it to. Nope, he's going to keep looking for a block on the corner. Did not get it. Got across the 35 to the 36 and maybe the 37 yard line. Desmond Guy will stand him up and push him out of bounds. Did it stop Time the clock? Out. Nope. But HBU will stop it with the first of their timeouts. Nice ball fake right there by Fleming. He faked out the entire front line. He did not fake out Desmond Guy, however. But not too many guys fake out Desmond Guy. One of their best players started all 11 games last season. Had a career high 18 tackles at Midwestern State. He is usually where the ball is when McMurray's defense is on the field. There's a good shot of the stadium here. Husky Stadium at Dunham Field. Great view. Welcome to college football, Houston Baptist University. It's got a good yeah, ring to you, it. You, you may have seen smoke emanating back there. That's the folks grilling the hamburgers and stuff. I mean, they got open pits here, which is great. It smells terrific when you walk through the stands. It's a shame that we're all the way up here, away from all of that stuff. Then again, maybe not. It keeps us focused on the job at hand. But uh, they walk through here before pregame and tailgate and stuff. And nothing beats college football on campus, that's for sure. And HBU's got it thanks to this great new facility, Dunham Field at Husky Stadium. So it's going to be third and seven now. With 107 to go. Big play here for the Huskies who trail by five. Craig Bell is now the back. Fleming's going to throw. Far side near the first down marker. It is caught. Great job bringing it in. The tackle made by Johnson on and the ability right there to pick up the first down on top of that. Brandon Taylor, the ride receiver who brought that in for the first down. Knew exactly where he needed to go. I'll give you that extra yardage right there despite the hit. So from the 45, first and 10. Running play, Fleming keeps, gets across midfield. And about first down yardage near the 46 yard line of McMurray territory before Calvin Middlebrooks makes the tackle. And HBU will use their second timeout with 37 seconds to play. They gave Fleming nine yards on that play. And one thing I've noticed about Fleming right here is he's, he's picking up on the fact that that defensive end is going towards the running back. That's why he's hanging on to the ball in that, that zone read style play. And it's working out for him. They're picking up some good yardage. But the previous big third down conversion, a great job by Brandon Taylor, the wide receiver, knowing exactly how far he needed to go to pick up the first and 10, and a great delivery on the pass by Fleming. Taylor, only 5'9", a true freshman out of Antioch, Texas. The clock, no longer your ally with only 37 seconds left. They need a couple yards here. They need to get right there to the 45-yard line. So second, uh, second down play. That'll stop the clock long enough to move the chains if they get the first down. But then it will fire back up again. Two receivers go to either side for Fleming. And Bell will be at his left shoulder. Three-man front. Fleming's going to pass. Trying to set up the screen, but Bell, the intended receiver, was bear-hugged. <laughs> by the McMurray nose tackle Joshua Fisher would never let him get out for the pile so Fleming had to throw the ball into the ground incomplete yeah I think Fleming just said hey you know what the way this play is set oh, the up the play was blown up there's, there's it, no it way to do anything anyway. right so now it's third down at about two Fleming gets the snap Pulls it out of Bell's stomach, was going to try and go zone read, and that turned out to be the wrong decision as McMurray was all over it and spills him for a loss back to midfield. And now a late penalty marker gets thrown by the referee. And, for a loss on Fleming for and Fleming is shaken up on the play. He's trying to crawl back to his feet. 
That's a big penalty. Automatic first down. Austin Campbell, the linebacker. Yeah, Bell actually got hurt on that play too. Looks like he's kind of shaken up. And you see what happened right there, right at the end. Yeah, the, the nice, the hit from behind. And Bell yeah. got him about five yards that, back. That's what drew the penalty marker. It wasn't the big shot on the quarterback. Clock rolling, 15 seconds to go. HBU has got the hurry. Ball at the 35-yard line. Kelly is now the running back. Fleming's got the snap. Throws outside, near sideline. Ball out. is caught by Wesley Lewis. And they'll have to use their final timeout with three seconds to go. I'm Tyrese thinking, House with the tackle. Let's bring Shin out and kick a field goal if I'm Vic Sheely. Yeah. Uh, he's proven that he can make it from this distance. We saw him in pre-game warm-ups kicking Look at 47, 48 yards here. Yeah, Ball right at the 30-yard line. Kind of cut that lead down to 13 to 11. And HBU could go for double points here, if you will, because they deferred the option on the opening coin toss. And so they'll receive the ball to start the third quarter. So you put points up here to end the quarter and pull it within two points. Then you get the ball and a chance to take the lead to start the third period. And they are lining up for a field goal here. It's going to be about 47 Danny yards. Danny Duncan is the holder on a knee at the 37-yard line. 47-yard attempt near hash mark. Into what win there is here at Dunham Field at Husky Stadium. Ball on the way. Does it have the distance? It is no good. Oh. Wide to the left. <laughs> Just missed. So HBU comes close to getting points, but they will get the ball when we come back for second half activity. Your halftime score, McMurray 13, HBU 8. This is college football on Fox Sports. Dunham Field at Husky Stadium. McMurray leads HBU by a score of 13 to 8, the first ever on campus game for the HBU Husky program. Let's take a look at our first half statistics. You can see fairly even, except in the passing category, where McMurray's got a 217 to 27 edge, but you have to remember 89 of those yards <laughs> came on that one pass down the sideline to Paxton Grayer, but did not lead to any points for McMurray. Yeah, that was big for HBU because they definitely bent right there, but didn't break, not allowing the field goal. HBU got on the board first following an interception by uh, Mike Cole, led to a 38-yard field goal by Travis Shin, but then McMurray would answer on a 75-yard scoring drive and the first ever touchdown here at Dunham Field at HBU Stadium came off the ground from Chris Simpson. Yeah, Chris Simpson capping off that six-play, 75-yard drive, and a lot of leg drive right there as he finds his way into the end zone. But how about the defense? Uh, Josh Jones here with a nice safety, picking up two points the hard way, and that is a man tackle right there. And the, the offensive tackle had no chance to stop Jones on that play. That made it a 7-5 to five ball game. HBU would get a field goal from Travis Shin to make it 8-7 at the end of one, and the only score of the second quarter was a five-yard run by Jared Smith. The point after was blocked 13-8 is our halftime score. And Vic Sheely talked about the importance of having a pass rush like that safety, the importance of picking up some points from your defense, and how important it is to get that pass rush. Here's Vic. Uh, what do you think is going to be the key to being successful defensively? Defensively, I think. 
as long as we can have a strong front to be able to fight those big horses on the other side. If they can get going, that just frees up everybody else on, on the backside to make plays and become a great defense. On defense, if you can create penetration, if you can uh, not get knocked off the ball, and you can do things to, to be stout at the point of attack because of the size and the girth and the effectiveness of those interior guys, everything else, your, your linebackers look like all Americans because they stay clean. The importance of a pass rush, no question about it. And uh, McMurray's had a little bit of success in trying to get to Jonathan Fleming. He's not been able to establish a rhythm. Just 8 of 17 in the first half for only 47 yards. And he was sacked twice by that McMurray defense. So the HBU offensive line's got to do a little bit better job here in the second half to get the Huskies back in the ballgame. And something we alluded to earlier, Jonathan Fleming just two months ago involved in an incident uh, late at night uh, where he was shot twice. Uh, had to go to the hospital, obviously, and then, but said it was a spiritual awakening for him, a, a change in his life. And uh, Coach Vic Sheely talked about what that experience was like when we caught up with him at uh, the Southland Conference Media Day in Lake Charles. Had a really good heart-to-heart uh, -heart talk with Jonathan. First of all, you know, in, in those circumstances, you want to make sure he's okay and that he's doing okay. Uh, and uh, he assured me that, uh, uh, that he was. And then later began to find out how fortunate he was uh, in terms of uh, kind of the near miss to maybe something more significant or serious in terms of injury. Um, you know, I think for us, for us who have children, you know, to think that uh, Houston's a great town, they're great cities, uh, how little sometimes we have control over some of the bad element that our society can generate. As a coach, it just, uh, I think it's one of the worst, the worst things you do is sometimes thinking you get a call when your kid's been hurt bad. So we get ready to start the uh, second half. Another short kick taken by one of the up men for HBU at the 30 yard line to the center of the field to the 35 and getting his way forward to about the 38 yard line. So that time HBU ready for the short kicks that McMurray has been employing along the way. It was uh, Corey Hayes, backup linebacker, who took that on special teams. And so good starting position for Houston Baptist. They trail 13 to 8 here as we start the third quarter. And you can almost hear the whole HBU coaching staff saying, get down, Corey, get down. <laughs> Don't take a chance. We've already seen one lineman fumble it. <laughs> yeah, and that could have cost them points and cost them the lead. Aaron Benson picking up a fumble and then fumbling inside the 10 yard line. So Jonathan Fleming's going the distance at quarterback. He has BJ Kelly in the backfield with him. Kelly's got the handoff. Man, he just ran over a man in the hole at the 40 yard line and pushed the pile forward to the 44. Joshua Fisher finally brought him down. That's one thing we noticed all last year. BJ Kelly runs so hard. He has great speed into the hole. And once he gets through the hole, if you're standing there, he's going to knock you over. Gain of about five on the play. Second down and five for the Huskies as Kelly shifts to the right shoulder, Fleming this time. McMurray showing a little bit of a blitz action on the near side. The play goes the other way for Kelly. Nice move on the corner. And he got forward Kelly for a Kelly couple. For no gain. I want to say it was Desmond Guy, a guy who's made a lot of tackles in the ball game that he just got left grasping for air on the cutback move by Kelly on the corner. <laughs> well, and, and Vic Shealy talks about, you know, finishing these drives and uh, winning the turnover battle, and this is uh, kind of key for HBU here to try to put together a drive and get some some yardage. They were just 2-7 of seven on third down, and they face the third down and five here from their own 43-yard line. Fleming's got the snap. Looks over the middle, has his man, it's Bibbins, and Bibbins will drive forward to the 49-yard line of McMurray territory for first and 10 for Houston Baptist. Bibbins was such a big part of this offense last year in that tight end position. He's got great size, good physical presence out there. Running quickly and a running play for Kelly. He'll get forward for about three, maybe four, near the 45-yard line before he'll be brought down. Well, Vic Sheely said he got he and his staff got to spend a lot of time with Art Bryles, the Baylor staff, and you're starting to see the tempo pick up on offense here, much like Baylor's offense runs. Keep that momentum. Second down and seven for the 46-yard line. Kelly still the back. Option play. Fleming keeps. Got a couple to the 45. Be brought down there. 
You know, almost think the scouting report on Fleming might have been he won't run it, yet he's run it quite a bit from about the second quarter on. So now it's third down and six. Seems like McMurray's been kind of keying on the running back on that play. Can they convert it? Another third down situation here and keep this drive alive. Fleming throws, Bibbins again, covers the ball up and has the first down at the 38-yard line. Bibbins very smart saying, I just got to get the first and 10. It's not going to go any more than that. Josh Jones and Desmond Guy team up to make the stop. Pretty Watch obvious. Watch him cover this ball up. Pretty obvious that uh, they wanted to get Bibbins more into the offensive flow here in the second half. Couple of plays to him already. Delayed handoff. Kelly just <laughs> burrowing his way inside the 35 and maybe the 33 yard line. Before we'll be brought down, Middlebrooks, the first one on the scene for the McMurray defense. Kelly's helmet came off, so he'll have to come out of the ball game. I have totally understood that rule. Larry Day will come on at the running back position. Larry Day had a great spring, good fall camp. He's earned the right to get some playing time. Three carries for a dozen yards in the first half. However, it's a passing play again. It's Bivens trying to bounce off his man and got the first down at the 27-yard line. Andrew Sanchez finally brought him down. But when HBU needs a play right now, Kenneth Bivens is the guy. 6'5", 242 pounds out of Sugar Land, Texas, played at Kempner. Great route, knows exactly where the first down marker is, picks it up. And got movement on the HBU front. Looks like T.C. Jones. One of the first to break the snap count. Along with his partner on the left side, Hunter Barron. So just when HBU's offense was starting to put it in gear, a five-yard penalty will stop the momentum a little bit and create a first and 15 from back at the 33-yard line. Yeah, that makes it tough on the play calling. So Day will shift to the left. Fleming will change the call. Blitz coming from McMurray. Run outside, Day's got no place to go. Five up front for McMurray beat the five up front for HBU. Jared King and Jordan Washington teaming up to make the stop. Yeah, nothing open on that right side. Day brought down rather quickly. And some linemen kind of got busy with each other <laughs> around midfield. Helmets falling off. Two receivers to the far side, one here on the near side. And now we got movement at the line of scrimmage, a free play for the offense. Fleming will throw it deep for Lewis, and it's incomplete short at the three-yard line. No penalty markers there, but it was a free play because McMurray was offside. So HBU is going to get the five yards back that they lost on first down with the illegal procedure. That's what you want to do if you're the center on that play. Snap it once you see the, the defensive lineman is already on your side of the field. You could see it was discombobulated from the start, but that's only because the center looked over and said, oh, he's in the zone. I'm Snap. snapping the ball. <laughs> exactly. And Fleming doing the right thing, too. Let's go for it. Let's sure. see if we can't pick up a 30-yard touchdown. So the ball at the 29-yard line. It'll be second down at 11. And B.J. Kelly is back in at the running back spot. Blitz coming, Fleming in trouble, lost the football, fell on it back at the 47-yard line. They were run over right up the middle by the McMurray defense. Fleming felt like McMurray might have been in the neutral zone there, kind of leading Josh a little Jones, bit. Josh Jones, one of those guys there at the end. Jones came up the middle, and Fletcher Jones from the outside. So the Jones boys converged. <laughs> Yeah, B.J. Kelly failed to pick up the block right there. So now you have third down and a million. Third down and 30, if you want to be precise about it. They need to get all the way to the 17-yard line. Pressure coming. Fleming over the middle. Has the man. Whoa, and took a shot at the 28-yard line. Was the intended receiver who hung on for dear life. And now penalty markers are down. And the guy who made the catch is Brandon Taylor, the guy who made that sensational third down catch late in the first half that kept that drive going. Yeah, Brandon Taylor, he knew he was going to take a hit. And boy, he sure did. Played at Brentwood Academy out in Tennessee. 5'8", 
Let's get the call on the field. So they did not make the first down with the catch by Taylor, but they will get the first down with a 15 yard walk off. Watch it here. Yeah, look at the shot right here that Taylor takes. And then we keep it rolling here. Watch what happens here at the end. So Taylor Taylor was open, knew he was going to take a hit, but caught the ball first Went of all. The That's air, the most important secured part. Secured the football, <laughs> took the shot. And we didn't go far enough on the replay to see the unsportsmanlike call afterwards. So the ball is just inside the 15-yard line. HBU trailing by five with a chance to go on top here with a touchdown. 15 seconds on the play clock, and they're substituting a couple of new players. This looks like... Wallace in the slot near side. Heavy formation to the right. Play fake. Throwing is Fletcher. Touchdown. Wide open. D'Angelo Wallace in the end zone. And HBU has got the lead back at 14 to 13. And D'Angelo Wallace out of Steel High School deserved that. He had such a big first half, made some key plays, and this time was left wide open. Nobody on him whatsoever in that end zone. And there is the touchdown for HBU, the first in the program's history this season. He is the only Husky to have more than one reception in the first half. He had three for 33 yards. And now payoff here. Point after try is up and no good by Travis Shin. So the, store, the score stays where we are. HBU 14, McMurray 13. 9.29 to play third quarter here at Dunham Field at Husky Stadium. Jonathan Fleming to D'Angelo Wallace. Touchdown, HBU for the first time in school history, officially. If last year was nothing more than a demonstration season. This the first official game played on their new on-campus facility, Dunham Field at Husky Stadium. But the point after by Travis Shin was hooked to the left. And our score is Huskies 14 and McMurray 13. You know, both head coaches expressed some concern about special teams. They didn't think that their kickers would have trouble making extra points, and each team has had a missed extra point. A short field goal miss for McMurray. So special teams are playing a role in this game. Yeah, and even though Shin made a couple of field goals in the first half, uh, did miss one also right there as the half came to an end, albeit a, a very long field goal try, but nonetheless a miss. Shin hits this one end over end. And Grayer will take it for the two. Up to the 15 to the 20. Now to about the 22 yard line goes Paxton Grayer. Yeah, you don't want to leave points on the field. That's kind of the, the moral there. Travis Shin's field goal that he missed was a 47 yarder, but Joey Silva missing a 28 yarder. That right. was kind of key for McMurray. And we've had a blocked extra point and a missed extra point. So special teams a little questionable for both teams here as we get started. McMurray down by one. And for the first time in the second half, Matthew McHugh, 10 of 15 for 217 yards. And one interception in the first half will lead the McMurray offense on the field. He's got the handoff. Inside it goes for Simpson. Simpson across the 25 to the 26-yard line for a five-yard gain. And he'll be brought down Jerry by Mike Simpson Cole. Takes the ball to the 26 well, the last time that HBU had the lead at 8-7, Jarek Smith had the touchdown reception on the other end towards the end of the half, and that, that was big. They answered it, and we'll see if McMurray can answer this touchdown drive by the Huskies. Back to either shoulder for McHugh. Simpson being on the right shoulder. And McHugh's going to pass. Blitz coming up the middle, swinging on the outside nice. for Tiarina, the tight end, <laughs> who is upended immediately by Eric 
Amawako, that transfer you alerted to from Oregon. But his helmet came off, so he'll have to leave the field for this big third down play. It'll be third down and six after a loss of one. Big play right there. Nice closing speed, making the tackle. Got to watch that celebration towards the end, though. I think the official came up and told him, just, you know, keep it clean. <laughs> you made a good play, son. Now go back to your huddle. Act like you've been here before. It's kind of like a, an Oregon duck kind of <laughs> quack attack look right there with his hands. Three receivers to the far side for McHugh. Short drop, throwing over the middle, has his man, has the first down out at the 35-yard line. And the catch is made. Is David McHugh, McHugh to McHugh. Brother to brother, making the hookup. Got Hinson's, McHugh's. <laughs> Not all related, but. These two happen to be. Pick up out to the 35 yard line. First and 10, new set of downs for McMurray, trailing 14 to 13 here in the third quarter. Running play for Chris Simpson, bounces outside right. Has a first down and more as he gets across midfield and to the 48-yard line in HBU territory before Garrett Dolan finally runs him out of bounds, but not before Simpson picks up 16 yards. Yeah, great run right here by Simpson. Finds the hole. Got to make a tackle right there, but Simpson finds a way to break through, drags a few defenders an extra few yards. I think right now HBU kind of misses Tyler Stevenson, the transfer out of Baylor. He's ejected in the first half. Get a broad experience, a little size in the secondary. Sure. Two receivers to the near side. Offset eye in the backfield. The cue from under center, bootlegs to the near side and throws this way. And right through the hands of the intended receiver, Jake Henson at the 15-yard line. Yeah, big hit on the other end as well. The quarterback is Garrett Dolan. Really leveled McHugh. Watch McHugh here. Faking the handout, rolling out. Dolan with some nice pressure. Puts the big hit there. But you got to make a catch right here. That goes right through the bread basket. We have an injured player for McMurray. It is the left guard, Rafael Gallo. Slow to get up. The training staff will assist him and get him to the sideline. Ladies and gentlemen, join the Huskies online. And that should bring Benjamin Salazar in to play that left guard position. The offensive coordinator for McMurray, Matt Kolb. He's done a nice job kind of mixing things up with run and pass. Second and 10 here, this is an opportunity. If you're HBU, you're kind of guessing right now. What do you think they're going to do offensively? It's Lance Henson was very, very happy to get a guy like Matt Kolb to be his offensive coordinator. Second down and 10 from the HBU 49. Running play, Chris Simpson with some room to his left. Dragging men forward to near the 40-yard line, but a penalty marker is down. Face mask, looks like. Eric Amoako is holding on for dear life. His helmet came off again. He's going to have to leave the field. Garrett Dolan, the guilty party, the face mask penalty. So the run picked up eight. And the penalty is going to tack on 15 more. Yeah, that was hard to tell whether or not he actually got the face mask. He, he kind of had his hand up there high around the neck, but hard to tell whether or not he actually had it on the face mask. So McMurray has marched the ball from their own 25 yard, 21 yard line. They have it now at the HBU 26, first and 10. Simpson with a run to his left. He ran into Taylor Thompson, who popped, whose helmet popped off. And Simpson goes to the ground. And now we got a little discussion after the play as the officials get in there. Play getting a little chippy down here. Fasten your, your chin strap there. A couple helmets now falling off here for HBU in the last couple plays. Uh, Moako's had his come off twice. And now Taylor Thompson's came off. Pick up a four for Simpson on that carry. Taylor Thompson out of Belleville ringing the bell right there. Two receivers to the far side, Jarrett Smith on the near side. And a back to either shoulder of Matthew McHugh. He's gonna scramble to his right, looking to throw. Throws, has his man, it's Jarrett Smith who'll go in for the score. 
Smith came all the way from flanked out left across the field. And the bootleg action to the far side bought Matthew McHugh enough time for Jarrett Smith to clear and score from 26 yards out. And that's Jarrett's second touchdown. He's having a big game. Already the career leader now in yards receiving at McMurray and a couple of touchdowns tonight. He's having a great game. One rushing, one passing for Jarrett Smith, and now point after try. Point afters have turned out to be an adventure here. <laughs> See what Joey Silva can do with this one. Well, and there's the answer from McMurray, answering that touchdown drive by HBU with one of their own. Ball back and down, kick up on the way, and this time we're good. So a 22-yard touchdown pass from Matthew McHugh to Jarrett Smith gives McMurray the lead back at 19 to 14. 6-11 to play, make it 20 to 14 with a point after. 6-11 to play, third quarter. First game ever here at Dunham Field at Husky Stadium, and 4,018 fans have come out to fill the stands here in Southwest Houston on the campus of HBU. What a debut tonight. But right now, their Huskies trail by a score of 20 to 14, 6 11 to play here in the third quarter. Well, McMurray answering that drive right there that, that with HBU scoring the touchdown, McMurray comes right back and puts together a nice drive for their own TD. That's what it takes as they regain the lead. Joey Silva will tee it up on the near hash mark. Because they've been going short all night, Taylor Thompson and Dominique Barrett have moved up to the 15-yard line. Silva with a short run-up. And will kick it this way, and Thompson will take it in at the 18-yard line. Across the 30. Ran into his own man at the 35. Still on his feet across the 40. And out to the 45-yard line. And what a nice return by Taylor Thompson. A little rugby scrum right there. Return by Taylor Thompson. I'll tell you what, these HBU. guys don't like each other right now. <laughs> I don't know what happened at halftime, but the, but the unhappy pill got presented to both teams. Because this has turned into a very contentious battle. Taylor kind of took a shot right there. And weaves through traffic, kind of picks up an extra five or six yards on that last ditch effort. Back up, please. Fleming with a back to either shoulder on first and ten from his own 45. Will hand it off, and this is Peters. And he'll have first down yardage across the 45 and down to the 44-yard line in McMurray territory. Ryan Williams and Perry Chase Franklin on the stop. Yeah, and Terrence Peters Jr. out of Stratford, 5'8", 190. Franklin. Another freshman, of course, HBU loaded with freshmen. Vic Sheely says he has the potential to be a very, very special player when all is said and done. Two receivers on the far side. Peters in the backfield. He's got the handoff. Hit the hole and will go down at the line of scrimmage. Knifing up was Chase Franklin to hold on to the ankles and not let go for no gain. Well, between B.J. Kelly and, and now Peters, Terrence Peters Jr., of course, you've, we've Craig seen. Craig Bell and Larry Day. We've seen four guys at the running back spot and shaken up on the play is Chase Franklin for McMurray. And I think the way he's going, I think he's cramping up maybe. I think he's trying to stretch out the leg. Chase Franklin. Junior, two-letter winner out of Dallas Independence High School. 25 tackles, four for loss a year ago. He's the injured party for the McMurray Warhawks. It was a warm day today, humid. Very humid. 5.25 to play here in the third quarter. 20 to 14, McMurray with the lead. And Franklin will get off the field under his own power. And you also see here the HBU sideline working on those avoiding cramps. Get those legs stretched out. Get the fluids in the guys as much as possible. The days of salt tablets are out. <laughs> get some fluid. 
Three receivers on the far side. Wesley Lewis split out here on the near side. Second down and 10 for the Huskies. Fleming changes the play at the line of scrimmage. Over the middle slant for Lewis. Inside the 35 and down to the 30 yard line. Wesley Lewis. Tackle by J.R. Arroyo. I think Fleming liked the matchup as Lewis out of Leander Rouse High School with the quick slant pattern. Fleming getting him the ball quickly for the nice first down. Now at the 30 yard line of McMurray territory. First and 10 for the Huskies. Couple of linebackers sneaking up tight for McMurray. Running play and Peters has no place to go. Those blitzers filled the gaps in the middle and Peters had no place to run and will wind up losing a yard. Josh Jones and Joshua Fisher make the stop. I think Fleming wanted to hold on to the ball in that situation. He had some territory on the left side to run, but Peters said, no, I'm taking this one. Well, the, you know, the thing with the option play is, is that the man who's taking the dive handoff has to assume he's getting the ball. You can never assume that he's not going to give it to you because if you don't secure it, it could be an easy fumble. Second down and 11 now. Start to roll out. Now Fleming throws it deep. Gone toward the end zone. Intercepted at the goal line. McMurray makes the pickoff, and it's DeCorian Johnson with the INT snuffing out the Husky drive. You had DeCorian Johnson out of Oak Ridge up in the Conroe area. Big time play right there. Every bit of his six foot one, 185 pound frame involved in that play. If you're HBU, you've got to try to pin him back deep with the ball sitting on the two yard line. But that's a huge play for McMurray. You know, they say he caught the ball at the two yard line. His momentum took him into the end zone. So it is not a touchback. It is where the interception possession was gained. And Fleming just did not get enough air under that ball because he had his intended receiver. He was looking for Wallace once again deep. We just scored the touchdown a few moments ago. Wallace had a step, but that ball was slightly underthrown into double coverage. It's so not classic football. I formation and quarterback sneak for Matthew McHugh just trying to get some operating room for the McMurray offense. And he gets across the five, almost to the six yard line on just the quarterback sneak. And you know, we talked a little bit earlier about Matt Kalb, the uh, Offensive coordinator for McMurray and Lance Hinson said he was very fortunate to get him because he runs a multiple system so he can adapt to any kind of personnel and walking into here where you had scholarship players leaving because this program is going back to a D3 status. You didn't know what you're going to get. So a guy who could run all different kinds of things was very valuable to him. Yeah, that's a good point. And he's shown it here tonight with a very diverse kind of offense. And that comes from experience too. Running play up the middle and HBU says no thank you. You are going down right here at the line of scrimmage. Nobody going anywhere. Paxton Grayer on the carry. On the Josh carry. Jones, no one of the first on the seven. scene. So now it's going to be third down and six for the Warhawks. Critical play right here. Third down. If you're HBU, you'd like to could get great set field up position. With some good field position on the midfield. Punt. Three receivers come to the near side. Jared Smith will be on the far side. McHugh from his end zone, flushed out to his left. He could run to the 10. Has the first down across the 20 and out of bounds. Matthew McHugh got forced out of the pocket and it turned out to be a beneficial thing because it put him where those three receivers who were flanked out to the near side all ran deep routes and it cleared everything out for him. Yeah, almost a designed run here. I think McHugh immediately spotted that there was no one on the left side of the field. And he's able to pick up the first down and more. Loses the ball, but once he was out of bounds. It was Dolan who finally got to him there on the sideline. Now the officials are huddling. And they haven't moved the ball the marker. Down down marker the down marker has the, the chain <laughs> started to go, but the down marker did not. Personal foul against Dominique Barnett during the play. So not only do they pick up the first down with a nice run by Matthew McHugh, 
but they get 15 more yards added on top of that because of the personal foul penalty. Well, the two times that McMurray's been pinned deep on their own side of the field, they had some big third down plays that were key, including the 89-yard play earlier, and right. now this one. So now it's first and 10 at their own 41-yard line. The Warhawks with some breathing room and a 20 to 14 lead. And the Bears Here in the third the quarter. You got to secure him. <laughs> Blitz coming again. McHugh forced out of the pocket near side. Throws on the run, and it's batted away and intercepted. It was tipped away at first by Barnett, who had the personal foul penalty a minute ago, and finally secured by Eric Amoako. Nope, Tyler Thompson 24, not 14. Yeah, Taylor Thompson stepping up. What a great play. Good awareness on the field. Pressure up the middle. McHugh with time to throw it. He's done a nice job of rolling out of that pocket, but look at the tip. That's why you practice that tip drill. He was looking for Jared Smith, who had gotten behind the defenders, but Barnett knocked it in the air, and then Thompson came away with a pick. So interception for McMurray snuffs out a scoring drive. Interception for HBU perhaps snuffs out a scoring drive. And the Huskies will have it at their own 23-yard line, trailing 20-14. to 14. Now we get whistles before the snap. Yeah, false start, HBU. Yeah, these penalties are hurting HBU, especially here in the third quarter. Greg Hadley, the guilty party. The ball goes back to the 18-yard line. B.J. Kelly is the running back. Moving at the line, but he didn't get in the neutral zone and got back. Now the snap, the handoff to Kelly, left side. Short yardage to the 20-yard line, maybe the 21. You know, Ashton you, Campbell makes a stop. If you're HBU, that tight end play has been working pretty well, getting it out to Bibbins, picking up that good five, six yards. They need something like that here with second and long. And if you look out, Bibbins is the closest man to the line of scrimmage in the slot far side. There are three receivers that way. He's the most inside of the three. Fleming's got the snap and a four-man rush. Going to launch it down the near sideline, and it is almost caught and incomplete. Penalty markers are down. The Hayanako making the attempt on the play, and it looks as though we're going to get pass interference against McMurray. Against J.R. Arroyo. 15-yard walk-off and a first and 10 for the Huskies. I think Fleming liked the matchup here. He sees one-on-one -on -one coverage, goes up top. And he picks up an opportunity here for a first down with that flag. All the way up to 35. Comes out to the 35-yard line. A little breathing room now for the Huskies. 125 left here in the third quarter. HBU trails by six. Kelly is the running back. He's got the handoff and some daylight across the 40 and may have the first down near the 45-yard line before Desmond Guy will bring him down. Some jawing going on on this field. But great play right there. Good design. 11-yard pickup. And whistles. As McMurray called timeout before the snap is... Again, HBU's trying to pick up the tempo on offense. McMurray trying to slow it down. They've been most effective when they've had that up-tempo exactly. offense. And again, we mentioned that uh, Vic Sheely gives a lot of thanks to Art Bryles and his staff for the time they spent with his staff to teach him the up-tempo style. They also spent some time with Mike Gundy's staff at Oklahoma State to get to see how these teams on the upper levels of college football and the elite offenses, how it works and how it can translate to this level here. And think about Oklahoma State's first game. They go out and almost beat the number one team in the nation, Florida State, and they definitely had less talent on that field. Why? Maybe that offense. You know, that offense, there's something to it. You know, and when you lose a player at Baylor, there's always someone else to come back in, or, or Oklahoma State, or you name it, when they run those styles. But it's speed, it's, it's depth, it's ability to uh, to have the players who have the endurance at practice who can and part run of those the, Part of that goes to the extent of seven-on-seven seven play in the summertime. Absolutely. That the high school kids get their practice on. 13 quarterbacks in the NFL from the state of Texas. There you go. 
First and 10 from the 46 yard line for HBU. It's an inside handoff. And breaking tackles getting to midfield is B.J. Kelly and getting down near the 45 yard line in Warhawk territory for a tough eight yard run. Finally, Devontae Bird and Stephen I and Asor makes the tackle. Great run here by Kelly. Comes off the arm tackle, breaks to the outside. He's a strong runner. Got to secure you know, he doesn't that look ball. that big, you know? He's quick. <laughs> you know, at 180 pounds, but sure. he is a very strong runner. You're exactly right. Yeah, great leg drive. He's got the handoff again. Cut back. Got a block on the outside. Inside the 40-yard line and down to the 35 goes B.J. Kelly. He is not afraid to take on all comers. <laughs> no, not at all. Not at all. So Kelly in just a couple of runs. Picks up about 20 yards here for HBU. They're now at the 35-yard line in McMurray territory as we count it down. 20 seconds left here in the third quarter. Sheely telling Kelly, great job as he came off the field. Quick throw on the outside for Wallace, who's upended as soon as he catches the ball by DeCorian Johnson. Boy, did Johnson come up with speed when he saw that little swing to the outside. And that's the second time we've seen Johnson just read that play perfectly. That's how you stop it. And that'll stop the play here at the end of the third quarter. We've got ourselves quite a ball game going as we go down to the final 15 minutes. It's McMurray 20 and the Houston Baptist Huskies 14. Stay tuned, fourth quarter action coming your way from Dunham Field at HBU Husky Stadium. Bring it back to Dunham Field at Husky Stadium in Southwest Houston. The HBU Huskies making their NCAA debut. As they trail McMurray 20 to 14 here, heading into the final period. The ball is at the 37 yard line in McMurray territory, and HBU facing a second down and 12. HBU will be at Northern Colorado next week, then at Texas College. Next home game is against Abilene Christian on the 27th of September. Jonathan Fleming has gone the distance at quarterback as B.J. Kelly to his right. Running play for Kelly, slants it back to the right, inside the 30 to the 25 and maybe the 23-yard line before he'll go down. Carried by Craig Bell, Jr. Produces a first down for the Huskies. Inside what a slew of running backs line. here for HBU, and they, they use them well, the way they interchange them. Craig Bell Jr. on the carry. He's got it again, and he'll get inside the 20-yard line. Bell will stop his progress right at the 20. The carry, takes the ball inside Picks up the about three. Really since the first quarter, HBU's moved the ball pretty well offensively. Nice balance. They started to get some rhythm midway through the second period. Correct. And since then, they've started to go, but they haven't been able to punch it across. Need to finish the drive. That's what they were talking about before the game. They, they finished one earlier here in the third. See if they can do it again. Three receivers on the near side. And Bell is the running back for Fleming. And Fleming's going to try and keep it. Come to the near side. Got a block. And dives forward to about the 16-yard line. Running on the carry. DeCorian Johnson will take him out of bounds there. But you heard the popping going on that cleared the corner for Fleming to turn and pick up positive yardage. Yeah, it'll bring up a big third down here. Fleming doing a nice job with the ball fake there to Craig Bell and keeps it. Had a Watch nose the block the right yeah. there by <laughs> D'Angelo Wallace. <laughs> They and gave him took some a room. <laughs> he took a hit. Third down and four. 
And Houston Baptist 4-9 on third down. Throwing complete inside the five and down to the one yard line. D'Angelo Wallace on the catch and Ashton Campbell makes the tackle. I like D'Angelo Wallace. He can play some football. I'll tell you what, he's had catches. himself quite a night. That's now six catches for him. Watch the concentration. Hangs on to it, knows he's going to get hit. Almost sneaks into the end zone there. Defense caught with 12 men on the field. There's that tempo working for you. Right. So move the ball a little bit closer to the goal line. It was already at the one. Right. They couldn't move it much. Let's see what the Huskies do for a package. Maxwell Brown comes on. Larry Day comes on. By the way, B.J. Kelly with 63 yards. Craig Bell with 31. Larry Day with 14. Day is the deep back. Oh, they missed the assignment. Fletcher got exposed in the backfield and will go down at the four-yard line. It was supposed he, Fleming was playing for straight ahead handoff and Bell went out to the outside right and there was nobody home to give him the ball. And there was a hole there too. <laughs> Guy yeah. and House teamed up to bring Fleming down for a loss back to the three yard line. Changing personnel is HBU on offense. Kelly is now the back with Fleming. Fleming saying, what play do you want me to run? So he looks back over his shoulder. Stack the receivers in an I formation on either side on the second and goal. Throwing for Bibbins, ball tipped and incomplete. Bibbins looking for a flag, but none coming. I like the play call there. Bibbins, that's been a play that's worked here in the second half. They had the good connections. He was open for a second. He's got great height. That's six foot five, and Fleming just trying to put it up there for him. Where He's saying the guy on my back was holding me the whole time <laughs> I was trying to get inside. That's yeah. why I'm looking for my flag but none coming from the officials. So now it's gonna be third down and goal. Huskies trail by six. If you don't convert on this play, do you go for the field goal here and cut the deficit in half? I think they're thinking touchdown right now. Yeah, they're not worried about fourth down. <laughs> right now they're worried about third down. Kelly in the backfield with Fleming. Bibbins is tight on the left. Going to change the play at the line. They have plenty of time as the play clock is only at 20. Kelly was shielding Fleming there. Fleming with a snap, throwing on the inside, intercepted! Second time tonight, down deep, no. They say he dropped it. My goodness, Jeff Arnold should have had the interception there. B.J. Kelly saying, we wanted to go for the touchdown. But now what will Vic Sheely say? He's got the last word. <laughs> well, but I think BJ's probably thinking right now, we Arnold got here. Arnold should have had that ball. It might have been ripped out at the last minute by Wesley Lewis. That could be a very heads up play by Lewis. Watch Lewis here as he sure. goes in there and knocks the ball away. And HPU is going to go for it. So fourth and goal for the three yard line, 20 to 14, 12 06 to play. They're going to call a timeout first. Yeah, I think we're going to talk about this a little bit more. Now they're going to kick it. <laughs> they got a delay of game. A delay of game. I thought they called timeout and said it was a delay of game. That might have been by design. Sometimes those field goal kickers don't like to kick it inside the five-yard line. Right, because of the sharp angle for the hash marks. So they give the kicker a little bit more. But McMurray says, no, we don't want the five-yard penalty. We want him to kick at that sharp angle. There you go. That's the answer so to it. So there's the replay again. Watch Wesley Lewis right there rip the ball away from Jeff Arnold on what should have been a sure interception. And that's and a difference of kept the chance for points for HBU. Yeah, three of them. So 20-yard attempt from the far hash mark for Travis Shin. This one up on the way, and this one is good. So the deficit goes down to three. It's HBU, it's uh, McMurray 20, HBU 17. 12 minutes, six seconds to play here at Dunham Field at Husky Stadium.
20 yard field goal by Travis Shin, his second of the night, or his third of the night, rather. Makes it a 20 to 17 ball game. Shin from 38 yards and 28 yards in the first quarter, and now a 20 yarder here in period number four. Has accounted for nine of HBU's 17 points. 20 to 17 with 12.06 to play. I think HBU is happy to, to get the three points there. Of course, they would have liked to have had seven yes. inside that five, but after that play in the end zone, where it was almost an interception, they'll take the three. You were an instant away from a turnover. You were just three yards away from a touchdown. You wind up with three points. So Shin will kick it deep. Grayer on the near side. And the kick will come in the middle at the eight yard line. And this is taken by Tyrese House, who's on the loose. And House gets out to near the 40 yard line. Nice run by Tyrese House. It's a good name for a return man as he tries to take it hey, to the to house. The house, yes. <laughs> He's got some good house. Size. He's a big kid. Well, he's uh a linebacker by trade, which is kind of interesting that you have a linebacker back there on special teams. 5'11", 205 out of Palmdale, California. So from the 40-yard line, McMurray with a three-point lead will scrimmage first and 10. And Simpson will be the deep back in an offset eye backfield. Fumble the snap, ball loose on the ground, still loose on the ground. I think HBU may fall on it now. This time, Benson falls on the ball and doesn't try to advance it. And HBU's got it at the 34-yard line. That's a huge turnover right there. Big change of events. You know, and it's interesting that they run very few plays out of an under center formation, usually out of the shotgun, but they fumbled the snap that time. Yeah, Aaron Benson, he had that ball kind of down low and Managed to pull it away. Aaron on the recovery he knew better than to get up and try to run with it that time. <laughs> He's got great size, too. 6'2", 235. I got a chance to talk to him earlier in the week, and wow, he's he's big. Coming over from the University of Texas. Larry Day is the running back for HBU on this first and 10 from the McMurray 34. Day with a handoff. Not much room. Knifing in from the outside is Josh Jones. Jones did a good job to come and get right down at the ankles and take Larry Day to the ground. Huskies want to keep that tempo going. They've been successful with it here in the second half. Slot formation to the far side, one receiver near side, and Day in the backfield with Fleming. Now Fleming's going to change the play at the line of scrimmage. Day will shift over from right to left shoulder. Option play, pitch it out for Day to the 30, to the 25, broke a tackle, 20, and down to about the 15-yard line. No, they say he stepped out of bounds at the 21. But Larry Day with a big run on the pitch, near side. Larry Day is another one who runs really hard. Watch as he takes the pitch. Fleming not wasting any time getting that ball to Day. And did he step out? He did. Okay, just double-checking. And whistles before the first down play gets underway. We're going to get a false start on the Huskies. I'll start. Offense, number seven. Wide receiver Ethan Fry on the outside. Can't happen in these situations, not when you're this close to the end zone. But HBU's running game has been strong tonight. It was strong last year. Well, Vic Sheely says there's no question that the running back position is the most talented and deepest on his roster. We've seen four guys do it tonight. So now first and 15 back at the 26-yard line for the Huskies. Day's got the handoff, slants to his left, and gets inside the 20 to about the 17-yard line before he'll go down. Chase Franklin making the stop along with Ashton Campbell. They say the knee went down at the 18-yard line. So it's second and seven. Day's got the handoff again, trying to run the same play. Broke through a tackle, gets inside the 15, and strong power by Larry Day. Gets him down to about the 14-yard line. The one thing I've noticed, the last time they got deep inside McMurray 
uh, field position. They, they kind of went back to the pass. We'll see if they stick with the running formations here. They seem to be working pretty well with uh, the attack on the ground. It's third down and three from the 14-yard line, and Kelly comes in for Day, who needed a breather after those runs. Now Fleming is going to try and change the play with 12 on the play clock. Kelly's got the handoff, and he cannot get away. He does try to squirm forward for the first down, but he's going to be shy. They're going to stop him at the 13-yard line. Josh Jones holding on for dear life down at the bottom of the pile. So now on fourth down and two, do you kick for the tie? Looks like you do. Yeah, you have to here. you got to tie this game up. But again, unable to, to finish this drive off in the end zone. And that's twice now they've had turnovers in McMurray territory that they've had to settle for field goal tries. The opening possession, the interception by Mike Cole, and now the fumble recovery by Benson. 30-yard attempt for Travis Shin. Ball is on the way. And we are tied. No. Wide right. My goodness. I thought for all the world that snuck inside the upright. Well, the snap was bobbled. That was part of the problem. But it was put down correctly. And, uh, it was Shen, down in time. Shin just a little bit off target. So with 8.57 to go, McMurray hangs on to this 20 to 17 lead. Let's take another look at it here. Ball was just a little bit low, but it was up in time by David Duncan, the holder. There goes the kick, just outside the upright. Well, that hurts if you're an HBU fan, not being able to come away with any points That's there. That's the second missed field goal of the night now for Shin. Look at that schedule here at Northern Colorado, at Texas College up in Tyler, and then at the next home game then is Abilene Christian. welcome to the Southland Conference yeah, with exactly. Abilene Christian coming in, right. Incarnate Word, of course, also Central Arkansas, Stephen F. Austin, Nichols, Lamar, Southeast Louisiana, and Sam Houston State. A lot of road games on that schedule. But Five of the next six are away from home. But great to be a part of the Southland Conference. You know, Historic. Historic, a lot of tradition in the Southland Conference when it comes to athletics, and HBU is very, very proud to be part of it. And McNeese State had a great game today up at Nebraska, only lost 31-24. It's a very competitive conference. So from the 20-yard line, first and 10 running play for Simpson. As he goes outside and picks up a couple out to about the 22-yard line. It'll be second down and eight. Now McMurray's going to try and slow this game down as much as they can, keep it on the ground, see if they can use their running attack to chew up some clock here and make it difficult for HBU to come back. Well, that front seven for HBU, this is their time to shine right now. They've got to somehow hold McMurray in check here. A three and out would be just what the doctor ordered. Second down and eight. Matthew McHugh has gone the distance at quarterback. We'll take the direct snap and swing it on the outside behind Simpson. Simpson really didn't turn around in time to locate that ball. He was running his pattern, which was just a wheel route from the outside. Cody Moncure was out there as well covering for HBU, but Simpson never turned around to see where the ball was. Yeah, and Cody Moncure, the way he was flying towards the ball, I thought he might look up and get him a pick, but uh, he was more concerned about trying to make a tackle. <laughs> so now it's third down. And eight for McMurray. McMurray's not been bad on third down conversion, six to ten in the ball game. McHugh gets the direct snap. In trouble. He's going to go down back at the 15 yard line. Garrett Nolan making the sack. We have an injured McMurray player. It's one of the offensive linemen. Back at about the 17-yard line. Garrett Dolan out of Barbers Hill High School in Mont Bellevue, Texas. Watch him come up right up the middle in that linebacker position, number 40. Fights nice, his way through. There was a nice crisscross as Aaron Benson was up there with him, and Benson went to the inside and looping around the outside was Dolan finding room for the sack. And with a fourth and 15 situation here, the HBU defense doing their job. They still attend to the injured player from McMurray down at the 17-yard line, and 
the way he is situated and where the training staff is, we cannot pick up the number on the player. But it is one of their big offensive linemen. Everett Burns, but he gets up quickly, doesn't he? <laughs> Tell you what, he, he laid down there for a long time without <laughs> moving, but he did pop up once he popped up. So now we have a punting situation for David McHugh. Burns, a senior from Houston, wanted everyone to know that he was okay. But and McHugh has not punted the ball tonight in the ball game. He had the one attempt, but he ran to fake. Remember in the first half and came up short. I do remember that call. <laughs> yeah, somebody got that one right. I yeah, did, didn't I? <laughs> Flying squirrel finding an acorn, Yeah, huh? there you go. I'll take it. <laughs> and Wallace stands back near midfield to receive the kick for HBU. The rugby-style kick is up and over end and high. Oh, it hit a McMurray player in the helmet. <laughs> wow. <laughs> it hit a McMurray player right in the helmet and popped straight up in the air. That was Charles Smith the third. <laughs> My goodness. Let's see. Look up, Charles, right here. Oh. <laughs> Hello. His reaction was It was uh, priceless, classy. yes. <laughs> so the ball is at the 46-yard line in McMurray territory, only a 31-yard punt for McHugh. And the Huskies have it with 7.28 to play, trailing by three, 20 to 17. They had that look like, Mom, this is not how I wanted to make the high highlight reel tonight. Craig Bell is the running back on the right shoulder of, Flet of uh, Fleming. Roll out, throwing on the outside, Bivens at the 40. Lowers the shoulder, gets to the 35 and down to the 33 yard line for a pickup of 13 yards and an HBU first down. You know, in the middle of the field, that play has worked well. They haven't been able to generate it towards the end zone in the red zone, but Bivens gets open. The break to the outside, nice catch, knows where that first down marker is, puts that head down and picks it up. First and 10 for HBU. Bell stays in the backfield. He's got the handoff this time, looking for running room. Dances way to the 30 and maybe the 29-yard line. Good Fisher job. tripped him up there. Picking up those extra yards right there. The play looked dead, but no, he picks up an extra three or four. A little jitterbug action there. First dancing with his feet to his left, then back to his right. Looking for some sort of daylight. Second down, we'll call it seven. Just inside the 30. Bell stays in the backfield. He's got the handoff, trying to turn the left corner. Got a block from Wallace, lost the football. McMurray will take it at the 42-yard line. Coming up with the football is Ryan Williams. And Craig Bell just lost the ball. And he's fortunate that Ryan Williams didn't pick that ball up and take Not it all run. the way for yes. a touchdown. Let's watch again. I want to see if he got caught maybe transferring the ball from holding it on his right, transferring it to the outside left. No, he's got it in the left all the way. And just he stumbled a little bit, and that's when the ball popped loose. He was trying to play off the block from Wallace at the 30-yard line, and he just flat lost the ball. So turnover goes in favor of McMurray. They'll take it at their own 42, leading 20 to 17 with 6.29 to play in the game. McHugh with the inside handoff for about three tough yards out to the 45 yard line. And that was Grayer on the carry. Well, no one said it was gonna be easy. This game looks like it's gonna go right down to the wire. Tell you what, of the 4,018 people who are here, they're not leaving. They're not leaving, that's for sure. There are some McMurray fans bringing the chant up here in the stands at Dunham Field at Husky Stadium. Second down, seven for the Warhawks. McHugh throwing outside, has his man Jared Smith at midfield, turns up field at the 40, at the 30, at the 20, he could go. Touchdown, Jared Smith. Third touchdown of the game for Jared Smith and McMurray as they extend their lead to 26 to 17. That's a big play right there by Jared Smith. Showing you why he is the career leader in McMurray as far as receiving yards and just a big time play right there. Making the catch and 
turn it around and poor angle right there too by the, the secondary. Play is under review and I want to see what happened here on the near sideline. He got very close to the sideline back here between the 30 and 40 yard lines. And that's the only thing in question whether or not he stepped out of bounds. Exactly. Because everything else about the play is perfect. Let's get a look and see if we can check it out here. McHugh stands, fires, spins away from his man. And right there at the 35 yard line, I don't think he went out of bounds based on that replay. Here's a different angle for you. Dominic Barnett kind of over pursued that play too on defense. Maybe that one foot. You know, that? It was real close. <laughs> you know, you got a white shoe, a white stripe, a white hash mark. Here we get a field level look at it. Let's try one more time and see if we can decipher this out. Remember, the replay officials see what we're seeing right here. Nope. Tight rope. Oh, oh right in. there. But he's in. But he I think in. he stayed in. He was in. Boy, he came oh so close, but he kept his foot in bounds. Game of inches. <laughs> <laughs> and McMurray's lead could go to 10 here with a point after try by Joey Silva. Still waiting for it to be verified. The same with the McMurray crowd. I think they got the early indication, baby. Yeah. <laughs> but the thing is, is, our official and the replay official are still talking here. Never good as far as uh, whether or not it's going to get overturned if it takes too long. You know, that means they're looking at it over and over and over. And remember, the evidence has to be indisputable. Now we're handing the headset back. Here's the announcement. That foot just stayed in bounds. They got the right call. Now Silva's point after try can make this a 10 point game with 539 to play. And HBU is going to have their work cut out for them. Ball is blocked again, second time tonight. We've had a block PAT and here's Houston Baptist on the run. It's Barnett. Can he get to the sideline? No, tackled from behind the 35 yard line. Dominique Barnett picking up the loose ball and trying to make the run for it for two points the other way. That could have been big because that would have made it a seven point game. Yeah, and how fitting that it's Barnett right there. He's the one that gave up the touchdown and now he turns around and almost makes a, a couple of points for his team. We've got a dandy here at Dunham Field at Husky Stadium. McMurray 26 and the Huskies 17. 5.39 to play. Jared Smith with his third touchdown in the ball game. Second touchdown reception extends the McMurray lead to 26 to 9 to 17 with 5:39 to play. HP has blocked a couple of extra points tonight, have not been able to return them for points. They have a nine-point game, so it's a two-point, two-possession game. You talk about a game of inches, think about these last couple of plays. HBU misses a field goal by a couple of inches, and then in turn, McMurray, McMurray scores a touchdown by staying in bounds by just a couple of inches. It's time they drive the kick. Taken at the 20-yard line by Thompson. To the 40, and out to the 45-yard line. Taylor Thompson with a nice return. He's had a couple of those tonight. Flag down. Down back at the 45 yard line in McMurray territory. I've had someone go across the line before it was kicked. That would really be a mistake because you had great field position coming up. That's something you don't see very often. Yeah, you know. It used to be that when the onside kicks, you could overload the formation, and now they make you keep a certain number of players on each side of the kicker. 
And uh, that could not happen. Or I should say did not happen for McMurray. So five yards tacked down to the end of the run. So HBU will take over right at midfield, trailing by nine. And Kelly is the back. Three receivers split out to the far side. Fleming throwing that way, a low pass, and Bibbins could not drag it off his ankles at about the 45-yard line. Jones on the coverage. It's kind of been the go-to play in the second half. When they're not running B.J. Kelly, they're trying to find Bibbins on the outside yep. around the first down marker. And for the most part, it's worked. They've had success with it. Second down and 10 from midfield. Kelly remains the back at the left shoulder. Three-man rush. Fleming throws over the middle looking for Bibbins again. Broken up there. Ryan Williams there on the coverage for the Warhawk defense. Now with third and about ten and a half. Definitely a passing situation now. And down two scores. You're almost in four-down territory at midfield. A little draw play to B.J. Kelly. <laughs> They've definitely had success running the football here in the second half. See what the call is from offensive coordinator Scott Smith. <laughs> Setting up the middle screen for Kelly at midfield to the 45, and it'll be brought down short of the first down marker at the 43-yard line. I think you go for it here. <laughs> Closing in on five minutes, need some points. And HBU is going to call a timeout here to talk it over on fourth and three from the 43 yard line of McMurray territory with 5.06 to play. Well, you've got a couple of options here. You can line up for a punt and fake it, but I think the play, the, the pass play to Bibbins has been successful in the second half. The question is, it hasn't been successful on this particular drive. Of course, B.J. Kelly's probably in there saying right now, just give it to me, I'll get it. <laughs> I think you almost have to throw the ball here. Unless they give you that drop eight into coverage look at the line of scrimmage, and if your five can't overrun three guys to pick up three yards on a running play, but I think you go out, out to the line of scrimmage with a mindset you're throwing for the first down, but if the formation dictates otherwise, you go off of that. We'll see what happens here as HBU returns to the field. Bibbins and Lewis are on the far side, the two tall guys, 6'5 and 6'6. McMurray is going with the three down linemen, right? They're creeping up. Well, now they're sneaking up. Let's see what they do. And we get movement. Ball start. Now you have to punt. Now it'll be fourth down and eight. The penalties have come at inopportune times for the Huskies in tonight's game. But the offense stays on the field. And again, those two big receivers, Lewis and Bibbins, go to the far side. Fry and Wallace are on the near side. Kelly is the running back. Just a three-man look. Fleming throws, batted away. Ryan Williams coming across inside out to knock it away. The intended receiver was Bivens at the 25-yard line. So Williams with a couple of big plays in the last two drives. Indeed. Fleming had his man open, but Williams really cut that corner quickly, made a huge play. Must have been up around 10, 11 feet right there. Got a great break on the ball. So Ryan Williams saves the day for McMurray, at least for now. Williams, the junior, out of Corinth, Texas. McMurray takes over at their own 48 with 4.59 to go. Good news is, is that for HBU, that drive only took a half a minute. On first down, a running play. It is Grayer with some room up the middle and carrying the pile out near the 40-yard line. He'll be very close to the first down marker. Barnett was the first there. 
the cavalry came after that. But they say it's a 10 yard gain. Move those chains to the first and 10. Well, if you're the Huskies, you've got a key on the run right now. Can't let that happen right up the middle. Barnes on the tackle. trying to run that slow clock. Down. <laughs> slow down. Two receivers go to the far side, a back to either shoulder. Matthew McHugh gets the direct snap, hands to Grayer, slants to his left, got to the 40-yard line, and that's all before he's pushed back. Two-yard pickup, we'll make it second down at eight as the clock rolls. We'll be under four minutes to play by the time McMurray snaps it again. Well, McMurray's just made the key plays when they've had to. Uh, we talked about the you know the game of inches, the missed field goal on one side, and then sprinting down the sideline within inches of going out of bounds, and Jarrett scores on this end. So right now, HBU is going to have to make something happen with this defense. Need a turnover defensively. There's no two ways about it right now. Pistol formation. Simpson gets the handoff, hit in the backfield. He's not going to go anywhere. He's tackled for a loss of a yard. Back in the 41-yard line. Hell Air and Al Moaco team up to make the snap, to stop rather. Jarrett Smith with the with the huge game. We kind of talked about him, but also Chris Simpson, his ability to run the football. He's had some big plays as well, a couple of touchdowns. Scored the first one of the ball game. Smith has scored the rest. Three receivers on the near side now on third down and nine for McMurray. And movement at the line of scrimmage is going to be a false start against the Warhawks. Third down situation here. McMurray probably thinking still run the football and run that clock, but... Uh, for HBU, they're going to drop back just a bit. Clock rolling, 2.45 left, 26-17. McHugh throws on the outside, incomplete. Broken up by Dominique Barnett, looking Barnett for Jared Smith. For HBU, an incomplete pass for It'll be a fourth look, down. Good look at that HBU helmet right there, nice look. But this is it for Houston Baptist. They need to get the ball back and put together a drive here as quickly as possible. They'll be in that two-minute offense, no question about it. D'Angelo Wallace will go back to receive. He's a big play kind of guy. Can he break a big one here? That's what they need. <laughs> David McHugh will do the punting. Wallace. He's going to try and put this one up there and let his coverage team get down there and pin HBU deep in their own territory. Rugby-style kick puts it up in the air. Wallace drifts over. Makes the fair catch at the 14-yard line. Two and a half to go, and HBU needs two scores. They trail 26 to 17. So let's see what Jonathan Fleming and company have up their sleeve here. Need a hookup somewhere, somehow, whether it's getting one of those running backs free. Finding Wallace again, maybe Wesley Lewis. Bibbins, he's had a big game for him. Larry Day will be the running back for Fleming against the three-man front from their own 14-yard line, first and 10. Fleming throws on this land, intercepted at the 20-yard line, and back to the 10-yard line goes Ashton Campbell. I don't think Fleming took his eyes off the receiver the whole time, and the defense doing a nice job of just making the pick right there. Well, when you're playing eight men through back in coverage, those underneath guys, that's all they're doing is spying on the quarterback wherever he looks. That's where he goes. Yep, you're exactly right. Fleming knew exactly where he was going to try and go with that ball. He was looking for Wallace up near the 25, stepping in at the 20-yard line to make the pick. It was Campbell. Now McMurray can ice this game away with 2.21 left as they have a first and goal at the 10-yard line. 
Well, the Huskies have had their chances, but they've, they've made some mistakes in key situations with the penalties, the turnovers. Simpson's the back. He's got the handoff trying to go to his right, and he's hit in the backfield and spilled for a loss. Benson coming up from the linebacker spot to make first contact. The loss, they say, is four yards back to the 14-yard line. Huskies have to start thinking about taking some timeouts here. Trouble is, is they have used one of them already. They only have two remaining. So I think you wait until after second down and after third down to burn them. In the meantime, the clock marches on to 150 and counting. Now a minute and 40 to go. Shotgun formation back to either shoulder. Again, the handoff is to Simpson. And again, not much doing. He's gonna try and drive that pile forward. He'll get to the 12 yard line and that's all. The whole interior, the HBU defense making the stop. Now he'd burn one of those timeouts. Clock continues to roll, minute 20 to go. Yeah, I think you have to now. Well, you've let too much time get away now. You've let 15 seconds on the play clock go before calling timeout. Well, you know, they they blocked a couple of extra points. Could they block the field goal try here and return it? You know, your special teams, at least that special team has been very good so far. Let's see, under a minute to go. Third down and goal from the 12-yard line for McMurray. Grayer trying to sweep left. Bounces off one and gets tackled at the 16-yard line. You can hear the timeout call. It was Dolan who turned him on the inside. Hey, Garrett Dolan has great speed. He really can cut those corners and come off the edge there. It's big hits, big tackles. Tua and G teamed up to make the stop after Dolan turned it inside. And with 42 seconds to play, McMurray will face fourth and goal from the 16-yard line and will have a field goal try of about 33, 34 yards. You know, if I'm McMurray, I'm thinking right now, why even kick the field goal? Is it really that beneficial to you? No, it's I not. Mean, <laughs> you know, run a sweep play to the you've near side a, and take right. as much time as you can. You've had a field goal blocked. You've had uh, you some mistakes with the special teams on that side. You know, you, you, could, you could almost, you're on the far hash mark. You could run a sweep play to the near side, come as far as you can, throw the ball out of the end zone so it doesn't get intercepted in return. Yeah, we're right. They're not kicking a field goal here. Yep. The <laughs> offense is on the field. And you're going to hear the McMurray faithful down from Abilene for this game applauding. Fourth and goal from the 16-yard line. Handoff Grayer slants to his right, gets inside the 15, and will be thrown down with 36 seconds to play. 35 is where they stop the clock at the 15-yard line. I would run a sweep and for no other reason to use more time. Exactly. A turnover on down. If you're HBU, you're the thinking Huskies right now we need to score quickly. Whether it's a field goal or a touchdown, we need to score quickly. They need quickly. two scores, exactly. And then they can worry about the onside kick after the field you know, goal. You know, <laughs> you've you've got to have a big play here. With 35 seconds, you don't have many snaps remaining. So you've got to get yardage in big chunks. So Quadre Wilson will be on the near side with Wallace. Go deep, that's the play. Yeah, <laughs> three-man rush. Those five guys up front do not let him through. Fleming throws, and over the head of the intended receiver, it was between Wallace and Lewis on the far side. I'm not sure which one was the exact target for Fleming on that particular play. They were both in the general vicinity. Wallace near the inside and Lewis near the outside. The ball kind of split him in half. Yeah, I think just from looking at Fleming's body language, uh, he was looking for Wallace on that play. Had a couple words for him. Stops the clock with 31 seconds to go. Second down for the 14-yard line. Fleming looking to throw again. Near side now. Has Wilson. He'll go out of bounds at the 27-yard line after a pickup of 13 and stop the clock with 26 seconds to play. You know, Fleming was a back and quarterback at Abilene Christian University of our Abilene faithful, or uh, remember the name. So he's been in this position before, but getting a chance to start here tonight, started the opener last year against Sam Houston State. 
Three receivers on the far side, and Wilson solo on the near side. And Fleming again launches it down the seam, and there was contact, and there's the flag as Wallace just got run over by, I believe, either Arnold or, Aguay or Arroyo on the play. Then it was Arroyo who knocked him over at about the 40-yard line before the ball got to him. Watch here. Right there yeah, no is question. the contact. Not making a play on the ball. You know, it's 15 yards for HBU, but it takes the clock down to 19 seconds remaining. Definitely you either have to score ball. on this play or the next play. Yeah, exactly. And now if you've got a trick play up your sleeve, now might be the time for it. McMurray dropping way back now. Three-man rush. Fleming sets up the screen for Kelly. Looking for some running room to the 40. And out of bounds at about the 37-yard line. How about that play by Kelly right there? What a great call. That's what you need to do in that situation. But now they need a score. Because you know you've got the big back. You've got the three guys up front are going to push up the field. The other eight are going to drop back. So to set up that middle screen. But now 11 seconds to play. you got to score here if you're going to have a chance because you need two scores. You're Hail Mary. Fleming, yes. <laughs> Throwing it deep down the middle, ball through the arms of two receivers. Wilson was first, Lewis was second. Wilson was coming from the near side to the center. Lewis was coming across the middle of the field, and neither could get their hands on it. Do you have a four-second score? <laughs> that's, that's what do, you, do, do you have a four-second score and a score on the onside kick? <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's even more problematic. <laughs> this could be the final play of the game with five seconds remaining. Fleming launches it down the field, and it is tipped and incomplete, and time has expired. So the Houston Baptist Huskies making their debut as a division, as a football championship subdivision team in a brand new stadium on their campus in Southwest Houston. Come up empty at the end. Our final score, McMurray, 26. And Houston Baptist 17. Back to wrap things up after this. Tom Franklin and Jeff Power back with you at Dunham Field at Husky Stadium on the campus of Houston Baptist University where the Huskies debut falls a little bit short as they lose to McMurray by a score of 26 to 17. Now this was a back and forth game all night long, Jeff, until Jared Smith took control in the second half for the McMurray Warhawks. Here are your final stats of the ball game as McMurray with 403 yards of total offense, 303 through the air, 291 for HBU. 
and it didn't feel that way because the HPU defense was was good at times, but that they gave up some big plays right. at some very inopportune times. The 89-yard pass was just key. That and was the killer. first half, and then the 55-yard scoring toss that put the game away for McMurray. But turnovers, which you didn't see in those final stats right there, really played a big role in determining the outcome of today's ball game. Yeah, Jarrett Smith with the three touchdowns, that 55-yarder, what a swing right there. HBU's trying to kick a field goal on one side. They barely miss it, and then Jarrett Smith down the right sideline, just tight ropes all the way into the end zone. Game of inches, and that, that was the game right there, 26-17. They had to use the super magnifier to make sure that right <laughs> foot stayed in bounds down the sideline, and it did along the way. And there's head coach Lance Hinson getting doused by his team. So our final score from Dunham Field at Husky Stadium, McMurray 26 and HPU 17. For Jeff Power and all our crew, Tom Franklin saying so long from Houston.